the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. You are amazing. You are amazing. You are amazing. Nobody heals like you. Nobody lives like you. You are amazing. James chapter 2. Especially welcome all our guests who have come from different places. You will never go back the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. God did not bring you here to waste your time. By the grace of God, we're a very serious ministry. You will never come here and find your time wasted. If you want to joke and jump around and waste time, this is not the place. There is an urgency. The fire here will never let your destiny remain the same. James chapter 2. Let's read this from verse. Just one verse and I'll establish a few things that the Lord put in my spirit. And then we'll pray. Last week the Lord told me tonight to be a night of deliverance. Great deliverance. 26. James 2 verse 26. Very interesting scripture. I want to use it to establish a few things. I've shared it here before but I just want us to pay attention. He says, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Apostle James was teaching the church something. Please listen. He was teaching the church how that faith would require corresponding action for it to work and produce results. Right? And so he began to teach that faith is spiritual, but it's the action the action is compared to a body and the faith is compared to a spirit and while he began to teach us that mystery he veered off in an attempt to use a simile to help us understand he opened up a revelation to us and he said just as the body without spirit in it right that the body without a spirit component is dead that means if you ever see anybody living, it is because there is a spirit. Are we together now? It is the presence of a spirit in a body that makes that body living. The body, this body is only a container. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, don't be deceived because you have worn this body in a long time. That's why you don't say you are an eye. You say you have eyes. Your spirit has an eye that it uses to see. Is that not true? You don't see with your eyes. You see through your eyes. And so, the Bible is saying the spirit without a body is dead. Right? Let me use this boy. Come, come, come. Yes, let me use you. Let's clap for him. It's my namesake. It's our school of ministry, baby. Now, watch this. As handsome and visionary as this boy is extract the spirit out of him and in one minute this body will fall down lifeless and you will you will run away from it the same body i'm hugging right now nobody goes to the mortuary to hug a body you once kissed that body that was on a mortuary is that true the only reason why you were attracted to it was because there was a spirit when you saw a beautiful lady as a gentleman you liked her you thought you just liked the body let her die and let's see where the love goes to all of a sudden 
are you understanding what i'm saying now that means anything you see in the physical whether a human body or any real matter it is useless until there is a spirit component to it are you getting what i'm saying the life giving factor to any material thing is the spirit dimension are you getting what i'm saying now watch this if this boy sleeps in the night and all of a sudden he gets up and his hand can no longer walk this disability is a body there is a spirit that made it happen are you getting what i'm saying now biology may give us an intelligent explanation medicine but is saying this hand refused to walk because a spirit made it so the same way a spirit can give a body life a spirit can kill a body the body executes the will of the spirit that is at work or influencing it i told you that the body is only an instrument of execution don't forget this if your spirit wants to move from here to here it makes your body to move it so it looks like you are moving but it is your spirit man that is moving that's the reason why when you extract the spirit this body can no longer move it can't talk it can't breathe still has a heart still has lungs still have, has liver but it cannot pump look at a chicken you see a chicken running around pick it up cut the neck in five minutes the same body is lying there you didn't remove anything you just extracted the spirit component in that chicken and all of a sudden it becomes lifeless are we together now watch this for every physical manifestation there is a spiritual initiation for every physical manifestation good or bad there is a spiritual the body cannot initiate anything the body cannot initiate success the body cannot initiate failure the body only becomes an instrument of execution listen if you learn this you will be delivered tonight that this body is only a slave to the most dominant spirit that influences it this is the first revelation the apostle is giving us that a body you see what you see physically right now to you you think this is a ministry but in the realm of the spirit there is a spiritual component that makes this happen are you hearing what i'm saying when you see someone healed or blessed or changed is is beyond what your eyes is seeing there is a spirit component that initiates that when a man gets up and tries to build a house and all he has is cement and that man is ready for frustration until he can bring the spirit component that will make that material project to work are you getting what i'm saying now anybody without a spirit will die a business without a spirit must die are you getting what i'm saying now a job without a spirit must die witches and wizards know this only believers do not know it there is no man no unbeliever no witch no no traditionalist will go and do anything physical without due consultation to the realm of the spirit because they understand that the physical is only an execution this is what david knew so when he saw goliath roaring i said forget about this guy this is a body without a spirit are you getting the point goliath was roaring and other people were crying and he said uh -uh, this is those who know will not be scared at all that roar and he said goliath i'm going to defeat you and goliath said am i a dog at least respect me you come to me with sling and david was trying to tell him mr man do you not know that the size of my body or my instrument is inconsequential for as long as there is a spirit backing and he says who is this uncircumcised circumcision is your key to attracting partnership from the realm of the spirit we are dealt with that right and i told you that your circumcision in the new testament is your tithe when joshua circumcised the nation of israel at once an angel appeared to him and he came to give him strategy he said i am i've come as a captain 
in other words he was also fighting he was a warrior but he was doing it spiritually how many pastors are trying to do ministry without the spirit component speaking english without the spirit component how many people want breakthrough want revivals no the body without the spirit is dead the second thing i want you to know is that the bible shows us that more than one spirit can influence a body that means a body can be a slave to the influences of more than one spirit for instance your human spirit and the holy spirit although they become one at new birth but it's only an example that this body that is a slave a mechanism for execution of the will of the spirit can be under multiple influences please listen to me we see that again and again in the bible we see peter being influenced by the spirit of god and being influenced by a demon spirit one moment the body is speaking thou art christ the son of the living god another moment jesus is rebuking from peter get thee behind me and he says satan, uh, peter satan has desired to sift you is that not true the bible tells us that when judas ate with jesus satan entered him so it was not just judas that got up and went out listen listen there is no man no man who does anything under the sun by pure bodily initiation it's not true it doesn't exist the body cannot initiate anything it only executes every initiation of anything comes from the realm of the spirit whether your human spirit the holy spirit a demon spirit that means the key to bondage and the key to liberty is not locked up in the physical it's locked up in the spirit since the body is an inevitable slave to whatever spirit watch this as i'm talking to you right now you are seeing a body moving and talking is that not true but you see this body but don't mind this suit on it it's just to 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 look decent it's just for leadership and organization that's why we put a cloth for this body but the real person talking is the spirit man this body is only executing it are you getting me now and so if my body submits through my human spirit to the holy spirit because the human spirit is the vehicle for submission so the holy spirit in partnership with my human spirit can find expression if god wants to touch ken he now flows through my body and i speak it god is touching ken and i authorize the holy spirit through my body are you getting what i'm saying now and then he touches ken now watch this it is easy to know what spirit is influencing a man by what kind of physical activities have been executed are you getting what i'm saying now you get my teaching when you have a father who gets up and carries bottle no the body is only responding to a spirit the man thinks he's angry but there is a spirit that made him carry that bottle when he wipes your head with that bottle and breaks it and then he turns back and regrets he only executed the will of his spirit are you getting what i'm saying now when somebody sees a biro that is not his own or money that is not your own and you hide and you steal it no you did not steal you were made to steal a spirit influenced your body are you getting what i'm saying now when a lady gets up and cannot see a man and sit down in one place following men all around 
don't just say this lady is a bad girl you are a stupid girl no her body is helplessly under the influence of a spirit flogging her is a waste of time because as soon as while you are flogging her the spirit jumps out have you seen armed robbers when they are about to shoot them you see all of them stand like this as if they were not the ones that stole the spirits are hanging around in that firing squad waiting for the next victim they will land on and part of the onlookers who are looking with great pity the spirit lands on one of them and he goes home only to begin to execute something he does not understand are you getting the point now yes it is a spirit that will influence you into saying yes to a man who you know is a married man with his wife and he says i love you i love you you didn't even know when you said yes to you you thought you were just in love no you are a slave to a spirit that is leading you to perdition are you getting me human beings are not free until we ascertain that the only influence over their life is the holy spirit that becomes the key to walking in righteousness that becomes the key to walking based on the word of god because the holy spirit comes as a witness to the word how many parents how many families are under yokes of bondage and will only execute so you enter an exam hall the same spirit that can make you of quick intelligence now another spirit makes you blank out you know you read you know you did all you did i went to minister somewhere and um i heard a very touch touching testimony of a gentleman very intelligent and they called him you know for an interview a job interview and when he went there the panelists were happy they looked at his cv and they said yes can you tell us your name talk to us about yourself and why you think we should give you this job that gentleman stood there and he could not remember his name this is somebody who went to school no it's not that he could not remember his name the body a spirit shot the flow are you getting what i'm saying now you are yahweh you are seated on the throne me marama Himarama Himarama You are seated on the throne So when you see somebody well behaved No, he's not well behaved His spirit Has submitted to the Holy Spirit And the body Is finding expression Listen you can never call an unbeliever well behaved you are joking no the spirit to trouble him is just on retreat let it come and you will watch that body helplessly under the influence are you getting what i'm saying now watch this the same way a spirit can make a body fail that's how the spirit can make any other physical thing fail a spirit can come upon a building project and make it fail are you together does a spirit can come upon a man's cv and that cv becomes the body that that spirit is wearing and that cv starts executing what the spirit looks like and anywhere you take that cv to it cannot give you a job it's not because the cv is not good there is an influence that is producing that failure a spirit can come upon the marital destiny of a lady she may be born again tongue talking but the spirit can also influence dimensions of our lives so that you will see a lady who loves god very beautiful lady loves god but the moment a man looks at her and loves her that spirit creates an impression a bad impression listen there are spirits upon ministries many of them may never listen and humble themselves to learn and grow there are spirits that come upon ministries whoever hears about that ministry will misunderstand it 
Have you seen ministries like that? Consistently being misunderstood is a spirit. Bishop Oyedeko shared with us how that this thing, I mean, this was a great man of God. The church in Kaduna was not growing. People would come, the next thing they would run away, they were carrying all kinds of stories and then they were fasting with the brethren and the Lord told him, come out. And he came out and he looked and he saw a dark cloud over the church. A real church. A true church. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ. With people who are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. Are we following now? And he said, this is the dark cloud that is stopping people from coming to your church. It's making people to misunderstand what you are doing. And he commanded that dark cloud and it rolled away. And bam! Living faith open till tomorrow. We are here tonight to challenge every force. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There are four things that Jesus did in his ministry. And any man who does not do these four things is not doing ministry like Jesus. Number one, Jesus preached the gospel. To preach means to declare. To preach means to proclaim. To preach means to announce. Are we together? Number two, Jesus taught. Don't say I'm not a teacher. Any man who can understand can teach. Because teaching is the litmus test to show that you have understood a thing. Anything you have understood, you can teach it. If you cannot teach it, you have not gotten it. So Jesus taught. Number three, Jesus healed the sick. Don't forget this. Don't say I'm not called into the healing ministry. Jesus healed the sick. Number four, Jesus delivered the oppressed. He casted out devils. Please, let's be very careful. So that in a bid to demonstrate spiritual maturity, we do not come to a point where we get up and start... Um, I, now I know that I've been criticized already again and again so I want you to listen to me there are all kinds of teachings flying in the body of Christ if you know me very well you know that I hate imbalance but it is very important that the scope the entire scope of the message Jesus gave the church be preached Jesus casted out devils and in Mark chapter 16 verse 15 he said this he said this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils I'm not talking of deliverance that people do all kinds of madness and all of that but for you to ignore the fact that wrong spirits that influence people's lives need to be challenged is an error are you getting me now it's what the Bible calls old wives fables Teachings that come and look as a consolation in the church, but keep them down and keep them poor. These spirits influence our lives and produce the outcomes that we see in our lives. When you see an ordinary man anointed, no. It's not just the body that is anointed. The body is only a channel. Are you getting me? For the anointing to find expression. The anointing is within. The anointing is spiritual. You came tonight with prayer requests. You came tonight with challenges. I want you to know there is a spirit behind that challenge. Every challenge in any man's life is a sign that there are demon spirits standing. That's not a sign that you don't have faith. It's a sign that you are in the world. The Bible says, the whole world lies in wickedness. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? True freedom then, does not just become jumping around and shouting, I am free. When we can obviously see that there is a, a spirit influencing you. How many angry pastors do you know? They love God, they jump around, but you do something, they can wind their hand and slap you because, you see, you can claim you are a man of God. You can claim you are whatever, but it does not stop those spirits from influencing you. Listen, 
the influence of spirit over a man's life is a contention it takes light and revelation and the anointing for you to stand in a position where the holy spirit is the only spirit that is authorized to find expression in your human spirit and ultimately through your body but there are many people under the influence of many spirits and they will not agree their bodies are helplessly executing masturbation yet they love god their bodies are helplessly executing pornography their bodies are helplessly executing all kinds of things then we try to create messages to say it doesn't matter oh it matters don't let anyone fool you it does it does matter then you lie down in the night to sleep and here comes a gentleman or a gentle lady sleeps with you some of you stand up with bedwetting you stand up with every experience and you just pretend that nothing happened i i pretend i didn't see anything why are you deceiving ah nothing happened i'm okay and you get up and everybody who would have helped you in the day no longer is able to help you and you come back and say no 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 i, I think there's something i'm not claiming look calm down and let the power of god set you free or tell lies and join the crowd of liars with all kinds of struggles in the secret place who will not open up their hearts for true liberty the bible says now the lord is that spirit he said and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty i was preaching i was in ministry yet demons were oppressing me shamelessly my own was so bad i would see them physically lie down to sleep and here they come marching gallantly into my room and oppress me they could oppress me so much i can hear people talking in the physical right a lady gets up and has an issue of blood one month two months three months losing blood losing your life no forget about the physical losing of the blood there is a spirit that losing of the blood is is a type of the manifestation of a spirit somewhere you get up a very healthy lady and all of a sudden you find out that there's lump in your breast and you just laugh and say it happens um when you eat in in restaurants too much when you eat fried food lump will come out look at look at the explanation that you are convinced and, and the spirits are saying i like this generation i like the way science is hiding us from them a man goes to bed healthy and wakes up in the morning and one leg cannot lift again i think the protocol department were there when one small boy did something during counseling i think the last time we had counseling one woman that we prayed for during one of the miracle services so they came for counseling when they came for counseling i looked at the boy the mother was so slim and they were saying that the boy was in occult and all of that and i looked at the boy and i said are you in occult the boy said yes i said who tied your mother he said me i said why now he said they asked him to do it i said go on loser who was there you were there lawrence i mean this guy so wonders that will not end the boy just went sat down on the ground carried mama's legs and started doing it like this then later he'll say remain small he's about to finish when the boy finished he got up now you would have you would have seen that and said this small boy but this boy is only a slave to a spirit when a child of five years old will not let the mother rest that coconut head is not the physical head there is a there is a spirit that makes that head strong and stubborn are we together now slapping the child in anger is only wasting your time there is a spirit that can influence your life and bad luck follows you you become a magnet you never magnetize anything good if guys is to jam people you are the one it will jam if police is to gather some people as suspects it's just when they are catching people you just come in they say follow them you say no 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 i attend koinonia they say go and explain in the police station now you may laugh about it you may laugh about it every bad thing happens to you everyone laughs in the class but the lecturer will ask you to stand up 
and say, why did you laugh? As if you are the only person and you were at the back. Listen, that lecturer himself may be a victim to a spirit. He's joining your heads together. And so by coming to his office, you now say, you, I, I don't you smile. What is your name? Now you are entered another level of, of trouble. humans victims to spirits that's what is happening in the earth i feel very sad when i see people they get up and they get up in the morning and they do not know listen they do not know that your body is only an instrument of execution there is a spirit that is driving you when you see favor coming to a man no there is a spirit that makes it happen there is an operation there is an anointing are you getting me now you can just be sitting down and then god will speak to you carry ten thousand naira and give a marker why didn't god say somebody should give to you there is something it's not just that okay god has spit no 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 if you understand this you will know how easy it is to walk in victory you don't focus on this physical body you focus on what spirit and what atmosphere influences it because that's what determines the possibilities there are people who almost never pay for anything when you are going to buy something that's where somebody comes and says do you know i was thinking about you this morning and you tell the person i'm not surprised because the activity of the Holy Spirit manifesting as different things. Favor, the blessing, whatever it is. Orchestrate events together for you. Are you getting what I'm saying now? As a pastor, the day the anointing is strong upon your life, that's the day everybody who can help you will not come for the program. You stand and preach your life out and everybody say, Kai, we have seen what, what God is doing through you and... Uh, as a family, we really appreciate. Uh, by God's grace, next convention will not forget you, I assure you. And you stand up and go. But someone else, the day he's coming, somebody is about to travel and mysteriously his car may spoil and he'll say, let me attend this program. And he comes and says, God has been asking me to sow into a man. This preacher is that man. You think it just happens? The only thing that grows in a farm without being planted is called what? Everything of worth is planted. Are you getting what I'm saying? Favor does not just come. A ministry does not just grow. Anointing doesn't just come. Revelation doesn't just come. Honor doesn't just come. A man doesn't just become sick. A man doesn't just become healed. Was it not in your Bible? Listen. That the trouble around Daniel's life was the spirit of the Medes and the Persians. Is that not true? It was happening physically through human beings. But it was a spirit. Because it was under the influence of the, the, the Medes and the Persians. It was a spirit that made men to serve idols. And now a man came called Daniel. And he was praying and his prayer was judging those spirits and so they could not influence the king and he made the king like daniel are you getting me now and the king's liking daniel made him to subscribe to the god of daniel and those spirits said no we have to find a way of bringing enmity between the king and daniel so one day you get up and somebody comes you you thought a neighbor just entered your house and jam your head you and your destiny helper and left it's not just that a neighbor came a spirit visited your compound using human vessels jammed the head of two people and left all of you together are you getting what i'm saying now a husband and a wife lovely people romeo and juliet the marriage is going well all of a sudden a spirit lands in that house and then something happens a woman who has been minding her business all of a sudden she looks at a text and doesn't see it properly and she thinks that she saw i love you to another woman she carries it and lands the phone on the man's head only to find out 
that it was maybe to their daughter or a spiritual daughter or something and now enmity starts and a lot of people sit down and say you see uh, just love yourself just manage like that wait and see the part two of that movie the holy spirit i mean the, the demon spirit will come again into the house something will happen that demon spirit will start making that man to fail in his job are you getting the point now he will return back home with the anger of his job that spirit the same spirit will start making the woman angry and be impatient so her impatience is jamming with his failure in the office what does it produce divorce that's the name at the end of it the apostle and the prophet that should rise from that family no longer has parents and the boy who would have loved church who would have been faithful in church is now forced to follow bad gangs you just thought it was a physical acting the body without a spirit is dead every time you see things around your life not working the way god orchestrated don't sit down and discuss get into the place of prayer immediately there is war happening in the heavenlies there is a clash of spirits they are claiming your body listen do you know that when moses died watch this when michael came to carry the body of moses he found satan too satan wanted to use the body of moses enter it and resurrect as moses are you getting the point now resurrect as moses and start bringing error to people and he needed the body desperately and michael said no 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 i'm not going to drag with you the lord rebuke you how many people saw your mother in a dream a spirit carried the face of your innocent mother landed it in the dream of her enemy and she got up and said i knew it i knew it joshua selman's mother is a witch this one i saw it the woman came with a knife how many of our mothers and fathers have been called witches and wizards and and this is what many prophets see and because they do not have discernment are you getting the point now they now say i saw who some this and that and that and that is it not in your bible when a a, a diviner invokes the supposed spirit of samuel to prophesy i refuse any other spirit from influencing my life I, I i don't have time for that i cannot be a victim for the the failure that is orchestrated look at joe one more scripture to prove this to you joe a man who loved god and eschewed evil but the bible says a meeting happened between spirits in the heavens job was not there oh a man just gets up in the morning and they have concluded a meeting about you your children are on the way thunder strikes them you just finished furnishing your house thunder strikes it your cattle die mysteriously notice all the deaths that happened there was one one people left to come and testify is that a testimony job i'm the only one who is alive this is what happened and then the meeting was held again and he said let's touch his body ah. So a meeting can happen watch this let's destroy this family and they conclude it you snore your way through the morning wake up and that's the last time you know peace in a long time you are a victim your body is only a victim tonight this is the this is the theme of this miracle service let me tell you when these spirits clear out of the way you will be shocked to see the doors that will open for you all of a sudden you who nobody would call you you will receive a call the last time you spoke with that person was five years he did just call you the holy ghost made it happen because there was a spirit that was stopping that call every time they want to think about you a distraction happens and you remain in that suffering and when you come to us men of god we say it's okay don't worry things will change one day go better that, 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 no, no 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 that's why i told you you must insist tonight you must insist 
you are mighty on your throne two things there are three things that give demon spirits access to people and families i want you to pay attention to what i'm saying three things number one covenants 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 you reign you ancient zion's king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne oh sing oh fountains of the deep kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne america as a nation Listen, a man can wear the inner wares of a woman, watch this, and be moving on the street. And that man returns back and blessings keep following him. A very stupid man, but good things are happening in his life. Let me tell you why. It's because of the covenant of the fathers. There were people who signed an agreement and said, Lord, we give this nation to you. Anyone who comes under the umbrella of this nation is authorized to walk in that blessing. And so, a woman, a man can go for plastic surgery to become a woman and yet come out alive. In Nigeria, you try to even just operate somebody's ear and he will die. Was it the knife that killed him? Are the doctors so daft? Let me tell you what our forefathers left with us. Ready? This is what they left. They went to mountains, valleys, regions. Listen. And all kinds of ancestry. We can fake it and pretend. Listen. I'm a new creation person. I've read the Pauline epistles. Are you getting what I'm saying? I understand the grace of God and the new creation realities very well. But I know God and I understand his ways. Are you following me now? Please come, two people, very quickly. So that I need to, no, no, sit down, Pastor Fami. I promise you can come. Come, stand here, stand here. Watch this. In my example, this guy is a thief. This guy is a wrong occupant. Watch this. If this is my handkerchief and Ken comes to quickly steal it, the moment he hears the, my footsteps, what will he do? He will run away because he's a what? Thief. But if somebody comes and meets promise and say, promise, give me 10 naira, I will give you this handkerchief. And promise gives him 10 naira and he gave him the handkerchief. Is there a contract there? Is there a covenant there? If he sees me coming, will he refuse? Because you see, the realm of the spirit is a legal realm. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So, our forefathers went to idols and they said, protect our wives. Make the plants bring crops for us. In response, we will hold festivals every time. In response, we will donate children to you. In response, they, it was not their fault. They did it because Christianity had not come to Nigeria. Now watch this. When Samuel Ajayi Crowder and many other Christians came, they brought the gospel of salvation, not the mysteries of the kingdom. Are you getting me? They brought the gospel and we salute them. But that was not enough. The understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom that would bring liberty was not taught. So even they themselves died. I traveled to, we were in Gombe. One time Gombe State. And we we're going to Yerima's village to go and greet his family. And on our way there, there was a rock like a cap. And they were telling us a story there. That the people used to live there. That that rock used to open physically there was an invocation that would be made on it and it would open and people would enter inside the rock and hide during times of war and this is what they said the last person to enter you are the one that is donated to that rock the last person to come out you are also donated to the rock are we together now 
and that rock has been faithful has been what the same way our forefathers had bumper harvest even where there was no rain mysteriously the crops grew these spirits kept their part of the contract all of a sudden some missionaries just found themselves into the village and they said we brought good news and they died in three days the spirit killed them immediately and said you are joking good news of what and then a few people received it and then when they received it they convinced themselves that because they are born again the territory was now changed i watched a documentary brothers and sisters in fiji island fiji island is an island small island but they love god now something happened there were missionaries who came to that place and they so beat the missionaries and oppressed them before the missionaries died they cursed the land they cursed the land and the people and they died and the people thought it did not matter one by one the fish in the river disappeared mysteriously when hunger hit the people from the government down they said something is wrong and god began to reveal to the church around there that look there are there are apostolic activities that must happen in this land if the territory must be cleansed this is what they did they began to pray and then supernaturally they found the grandchildren of the missionaries listen to me they brought the grandchildren of the missionaries to the city they loved them and the children blessed the land and say we release you from the cause of our fathers it's, it's a documentary in less than one week they saw fish crops started growing fiji island changed at once there are so many families that are seated part of the terms of the contract is that if you don't bow down to that idol you will never build a house you will never marry contract sealed now you came that you are born again and you are moving around 35 37 no marriage the other one too is coming when you meet pastors they say no problem are you not born again just believe marriage is going the ones that get married no children mysteriously you are seeing the same patterns happen because covenants are powerful that was the very same principle jesus used to redeem man covenants covenants are you getting what i'm saying now covenants are powerful until they are broken the spirits the custodian of those covenants are authorized to still begin to execute the terms on the of the covenants even on the victims please believe what i'm saying i've prayed for too many people i've ministered to too many people i'm not telling you stories i'm telling you what i was free from number two ignorance ignorance authorizes demon spirits to buffet people psalm 82 verse 5 bless you guys thank you they know not neither will they understand they crop in darkness confusion ignorance and as a result the earth is out of course but have i not said verse 6 ye are god and all of you are children of the most high he said but you shall die like men men and fall like one of these princes the bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge ignorance ignorance of the mysteries of the kingdom ignorance of the principles of the kingdom ignorance of the keys to true liberty in the spirit number three disobedience personal disobedience deuteronomy when you read i think chapter 28 or so it shall come to pass it says thou shalt diligently hearken to these things to do and observe all that i command you this day that you shall be exalted above all nations and the blessing shall come upon you and overtake you is tied to your obedience the Bible says having the readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is perfected when it is complete disobedience authorizes the devil to buffet our lives don't let anybody lie to you that when you disobey God nothing happens no it's not about God doing it it's about the laws in the spirit they will not change 
they didn't start with the old testament those laws predate our dispensation are we together now so tonight i want you to look at your life very carefully especially for those of us who have come have you not seen traces of the influence of darkness in one area or the other that does not mean you are not born again that does not mean you are not serious with god but it's time tonight on behalf of you and your family members to rise up and say no way i come by the blood i come to challenge these things there are many of us who have never received a testimony of any good thing that anybody has done in your life somebody buys a recharge card to give you it disappears physically that's that's the extent to which this thing is working against you have you seen people like that a guy tells a lady i love you car will jam him two hours later just for trying to verbalize that i'm considering marrying you car jams him his friend now comes and says Tor, since my friend has come me too i love you something happens let me tell you the meaning of that it puts a stigma on you and your family are you getting me now and they say these people there is death have you not seen lands that people bought land to build house why do you think we dedicate properties why do you think we pour oil on land i know a man who bought a property and went there to stroll in the night and received a slap in the in the in the land true true story because the spirit there does not care whether you paid for it gave him a slap when listen when i was in secondary school we were in a temporal site before they moved us to the, pam the permanent site that temporal site used to be a hospital are you getting the point where the place that was like the mortuary was part of the place that was converted to our kitchen i tell you many students had encounters with strange beings you are entering to ease yourself and you will just hear sounds sounds that can give you a headache for a long time i remember our school getting ultimate power so that we we'll watch as their own strategy to deliver us from this this nonsense many students were initiated into occultism because of that but tonight we come in the name of the lord the captain of the army that this situation in your life must end I sat back there fighting tears when all the people were sharing their testimonies a testimony is simply what happens when the Holy Spirit becomes the only influence in a man's life any other spirit must create problems tonight daddy mommy sisters and brothers there is need to deal with certain things in our lives I saw poverty in my family as if we offended God coming from a pastor's family didn't change my family background your name can be Solomon you will remain poor until what needs to be addressed That's why I told you tonight will be a night of massive deliverance. Listen, as we begin to pray, many of you who are sick will all of a sudden turn and find out that the sickness has gone. Really, when you understand this, you will know what a miracle is. A miracle is what happens when the spirit that is causing that ailment departs. This is what Jesus did to the woman who was bound. He looked at her in the spirit and he saw that a spirit had tied her for 18 years. And he said, woman, thou art loose lose he didn't say thou art healed he said thou art loose the moment the spirit left he laid hands on her and straightened the physical body and there she went remember that madman at gathering that was an evangelist in a cave tearing himself into pieces the moment the spirit heard that jesus was coming they were waiting for him at the other side hallelujah Mighty on your throne, mighty on your throne, 
I'll never forget one time I was praying, praying seriously. I was in the spirit and I had a vision. I saw that there is a tree that is close to where I stay and I didn't see that tree again. I just saw a great beast like, like, a, like a being. The tail was a snake. The eyes were big like human head. Imagine this head now like an eye. Two of them. One here, one here. And the spirit was looking at me with fierce anger. And all he told me is, so you think you can bring God's people into prosperity. And then it left. That was it. Mighty on your throne. Mighty on your throne. That's the reason why every time Satan wants to destroy you, the devil will now cause you to disrespect that person. So your mother may be an anointed woman and you will fight and tear and say over my dead body for you to pray with me. And Satan will say, Amen. Let's go. And then the oppression starts because your pride and your arrogance will not allow you to go to the person and say, help me. Tonight we are going to cry to the King of Kings. I don't know if you came for this miracle service, especially for those who are family people here. You should never go back the same. You see the results of people? 4.8, 5 points. They have always had that ability. Even when they were getting one point, it's a spirit that makes that happen. Don't let anyone fool you. You are not so daft. Human beings were created intelligent. When you enter an exam hall and you write nonsense and come out with zero and smile and say it's just because I didn't read well. Is that really true? How many of you watch film twice to explain it? You sit down and watch a three hour film once and you can come out and recite that film completely with the hair of the actor's wife. And that was, you didn't read for it. Yet you spend six months or five months reading for one course and then at the end of it you come and fail it and get nonsense and you keep convincing yourself it's just that I didn't get it. It is the reason why you can read a novel of 1,000 pages but a lifetime you can't read half of the Bible because there is a spirit stopping you. If this was a novel some of us would say take this I will bring it for you next week friday and you will exhaust it but from the day you were born the day you were born till today you have not read up to one third of the bible one time you cried and prayed and fasted and started and three days later remember when you carried your devotional and did balance brought forward you started reading from two weeks back as a sign of repentance after you read it you now threw it away because you cannot help yourself in the flesh it takes the anointing of the spirit that's why he sends carpenters that's why he puts miracle services like this so that you can come under the influence of god's power how about genotype issues ss you get up and find out you are ss or as do you know the bible never mentions the issue of ss or as are you aware of that that thing was a technology that was fabricated by satan to stop people from getting married you see a beautiful lady who has a prophet in her womb to come and then one spirit just brings one one demonic report called ss and they say sorry we can't join you because you are going to kill your children for that devil is a liar in this place tonight i'm challenging you because when we rise we are going to pray the miracles will start as we pray you've got to be angry with yourself and say no enough is enough enough is enough we are come to mount zion where there is an innumerable company of angels where there is the blood of sprinkling the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than any covenant that speaketh better things than any ordinance the good news is that jesus has paid the price our job is to enforce that victory are you getting my point we enforce that victory by engaging the mysteries of the kingdom that bring for liberty we are going to pray that that power that has tied our destinies down it must let us go
same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me yeah. your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me sing it two more times with faith in your heart same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me jump up on your feet and we sing it one more time same power that conquered the grave lives in me Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. One more time with faith in your spirit. Say power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Listen, deliverance, therefore, is a separation. It's the spiritual process that experientially brings the separation between you and the forces and influences. The spirits that attempt to influence your life. The legal separation. Brothers and sisters, when that happens to you, then you will see gates open by themselves when that happens to you you will see realms of favor all these things people pray on you must challenge those spirits you must challenge those spirits on behalf of yourself and your family and god is ready for us tonight i tell you god is ready for us tonight lift your voice in one minute and bless him for this word the body without a spirit is dead the body without a spirit is dead now i realize that there is a spiritual component to the challenges in my life lift your voice and thank him for this revelation lord i now realize that there is a spirit component to the failure in my family there is a spirit component to the retrogression in my life there is a spirit component to my lack of admission there is a spirit component to my lack of marriage there is a spirit component to the poverty in my family are you praying tonight let the dissatisfaction rise from you. Oh, come on, tonight is your night of liberty. Same power. Conquer the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. Just the voices, sing it from your heart. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. The power that can challenge any altar. The power that can challenge any force of witchcraft. 
any generational cause. One more time, sing it. That conquer the grave lives in me, lives in me. Yeah. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. Same power, Same power. that conquer the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love, your love, say your love that rests to the earth lives in me, lives in me. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice right now and mention everything you know that is a tragic event in your life and challenge it. Say it must stop tonight. Lift your voice. Oh, come on, Koinonia, you should be praying. Ha pare ke 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 patata mandala tata challenge the spirit challenge the spirit behind failures challenge the spirit behind marital delays challenge the spirit Challenge the spirit of death from your family. Challenge the spirit of death. Challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit. He must let you go tonight. He must let you go tonight. Those outside, I hope you are praying. This is your destiny tonight. The spirit, the body without a spirit is dead. Hallelujah. 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 Look up, please. Your failure without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Barrenness without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Are you getting what I'm saying? The key to liberty is to evict the spirit that initiates that thing. For a body without a spirit is dead. Any cause without a spirit backing it is dead. It's null and voice. Any pronouncement, any enchantment without a spirit is dead. Therefore, I want you to lift your voice. And I want you to declare forget about the problems lift your voice and speak as a believer that you are to every spirit address it behold i give you power over snakes scorpions pray Oh yes, he must leave you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. There are spirits that will never allow you walk in the anointing. They will never let your eyes open to see visions. And even when it opens, they will they will bring you into error so that everything you see misleads you into trouble. I'd like you to lift your voice again. Just do what I'm asking you to do. 
from the realm of the heavens challenge powers challenge forces over your finances Oh, it must change. It must change. It must change. It must change tonight. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. My goodness. It's a strong anointing in this place. Oh, it must let you go tonight. Who says that breakthrough will not come? Who says that marriage will not come? Who says that cancer cannot die? Who says that HIV cannot live? Maka kapata. Lift your hands to the heavens. Lift your hands. My goodness. All I see in this room and outside is fire. That's all I see. Fire. You will see deliverance tonight like you have never seen. This one is the one that will bring your miracle. Listen. As this prayer goes on, miracles will start immediately. Many of you will start getting reports from your body. Many of you will be open to visions. Right now, lift your hands. Hallelujah. My goodness, there is such a heavy unction on me. It's for deliverance tonight. It must give way for you to move forward. At the count of three, hear me. Listen, I want you to shout Jesus at the top of your voice. At the top of your voice is a prophetic instruction. As you shout it, fire. Some of you visions, your eyes will be open in the spirit. You will see covens catching fire. Matalabata. Father, you told me tonight is a night of deliverance. There are families under bondage. There are businesses under bondage. Enough is enough. Let your fire bring deliverance. Are you ready now? At the count of three, may heaven invade this place. One, two, three. Second, second, I command covens. I command altars. I command spirits. Kaporotose. Bring them out. Fire! 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 Brings deliverance tonight! Shaka baba 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 Emprotos tete Shaka tete 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 we are going to shout it again. Please don't do it here. I see many people vomiting poison. Physical poison. As you shout, physically, it will come out. Lift your voice. Bata, bata. Shaka, ta, ta, ta. Mare, tende, tepa. Father, anything that has been planted 
in the body of anyone right now as you shout jesus we have victory one two three he must let you go he must let you go you are coming out of their lives you are coming out of their lives you are coming out of their lives My goodness fire is burning in this place fire is burning in this place fire is burning in this place the devil must let you go the devil must let you go the devil must let you go the Lord is giving me a word right now there are ladies here there is a spirit that comes to you in the night to oppress you to sleep with you right now lord where are they let that fire let that fire bring deliverance right now right now right now right now every spirit husband every manifestation every spirit wife every devil that has leads to you it leaves you now now right now He must leave you now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a lady. You see physical snakes. Where is that lady? Physically, physically. It appears to you. Physically. The lady is right here. Please come out. I don't know who that lady is. Physical snake. It appears to you. You see it. Ala barata to koto barada ba, shenderete katele bosba, raka baroto supati na malada. Let me tell you something. After this miracle service, you will see advancement in your life in a way that will surprise you. That's when you will know that Satan is not as powerful as he looks. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and pray. Any covenant that ties me to anything of the fathers, I've been called out of every tribe, every tongue. I am a, I'm a new creation, no longer connected to ancestry. Lift your voice and pray. Every altar that connects me to my fathers, Every witchcraft that attempts to connect me. No, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. Hallelujah. 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 We we'll pray for the sick, but there are miracles happening right now. When I call your, your case, just check it and come out here right now. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lady. Please check it. There's like a growth right here at the side of your breast. Check it right now. You'll find out that it's gone. Check it right now right now and make your way to the front i see someone having severe pain your tie right under here your tie there is severe pain severe pain the lord is healing that person right now please check yourself and make your way to the front right now check yourself make your way to the front i'm seeing two ladies you came here with heaviness there is heaviness on your chest it's just like something heavy god is healing people can you appreciate jesus hallelujah there are miracles happening 
make your way to the front now we'll give you room to testify stand here all the people that are coming out for miracles just stand here right now there are miracles that are happening i see someone like your nose it's like there is an irritation in your nose while we were praying you felt like there was fire on it and now it's lifted now it's lifted completely it's gone right now right now right now i'm seeing someone severe peptic ulcer it hooks you hooks you very seriously as we started praying it just disappeared who is that make your way to the front right now right now right now i see a lady you hear a voice telling you you will die not a vision a physical voice physical voice it tells you you will die a physical voice physical voice it speaks to you physically can you help me all the please if i don't call anybody's case i'm going to pray for the sick i'm calling miracles cases that have happened help me um aaron would you help me just examine these people and then we'll take a few testimonies god is giving people miracles miracles right now miracles right now miracles are happening right now i'm seeing somebody listen there is a growth you came here with the growth at the back of your neck check it now it has disappeared check it now now and make your way to the front put your hand there and check it you will find out that that growth is gone completely i'm seeing two holes two holes of a left teeth being healed right now check it you won't find the hole again two holes two holes of your teeth check it right now and make your way to the front my goodness god is doing miracles in this place there are miracles that are happening miracles that are happening i saw this same case in kaduna this morning now i'm seeing four people four people there is one guy and three ladies you have pile pile for one of the ladies when you go to ease yourself it's as if you are giving birth blood comes out go and check yourself now you find out that that pile is gone gone back to the devil go and check it please please we're not playing games don't sit back confirm your miracle and seal it i know there is a guy i saw a guy pile severe pile hallelujah the lord is showing me a lady tears just start coming out of your eyes without any you are not crying but it just starts coming out it's very embarrassing it starts coming out right now the lord is healing you wherever you are confirm it and make your way to the front right now confirm it and make your, your way to the front right now right now confirm it and make your way to the front we'll give all of them room to testify god is healing people right now i'm seeing someone with this finger look at me this finger this very finger that's what the lord is showing me there is a miracle happening on that finger this very one i don't know if it broke or something happened to it but there is a miracle happening to that finger right now right now i'm hearing a name gabriel 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 who is gabriel 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 the lord is bringing a a miracle for gabriel gabriel i've been fighting this name but let me bring it out i'm hearing a name asabe i don't know if it's a woman or somebody in a family asabe asabe i'm hearing that name who is asabe please confirm make sure you confirm it let's not huh you are as a bay uh but i'm seeing another person again no oh. eh? this you are a, please stand here miracles everywhere come tell us very quickly come come please help us give a run let's let's coordinate them okay come sir let's just listen to this give them the mic lawrence just testify tell us look at the crowd straight to the point what happened to you what is the miracle praise the lord 
I am the girl whom the man of God prophesied. I have an irritation in my nose since 2012. 2012. Yes. And now what happened? Every day, once I put my hand, I, I always notice blood coming out. But now, I felt something drop out of my nose. That devil leaves you forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Free. Give Jesus praise. God is doing miracles here. All kinds of miracles are happening in this place. Please, the next people, let's have them come very quickly. Just turn and let's testify. Don't look at me. Look at the crowd. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I have this bonus. While we are confession. talking, there is a lady who will come strongly me. under the anointing outside. Please pick that lady and bring her. Hallelujah. As we are talking, the power of God is, in fact, two ladies. Two ladies outside, mightily by the anointing. Please pick them and bring them. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. On my left thigh, I have this burning sensation. I don't even know what cause, but I know that once it starts, it burns me as if I'm sitting on fire. Okay. But now it's gone. And since last hearing this voice saying I will die, even when I was coming last week, I had this fear that I was going to... But right now, gone. completely gone. Give Jesus praise. God bless you. Yes, please. Check yourself. If you see a miracle, you can come out. We are going to pray for the sick, but we want to take testimonies. We'll give you an opportunity to tell us what God is doing. Mama, please stand up. Please don't let Mama sit down for God's sake. Give her a chair. Mama should not be kneeling down. Praise the yes, Lord. please. Sometimes I normally feel pains in my chest. Sometimes I normally feel pains in my chest, but now I feel very... Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Any pain? Any pain? Is there any pain? Is there any pain? Give Jesus praise. Yes, please. Praise God. While he was preaching, I was having peptic ulcer. So peptic ulcer. Out. But while we started praying, it left me. And There's I one more outside. Go and carry her. Mm. It left me immediately. Now I'm not feeling it again. No pain again. Give Jesus praise. Yes, ma'am. Praise the, praise the Lord. I used to have this heavy pain on my chest since 2002. But, um... When I went to see the doctor, they said it was pneumonia. It's, sometimes I can't breathe. Pneumonia. The pastor said I should sh we should shout Jesus. I can't breathe. I can't shout too much. But the moment I shout Jesus, I fell on the floor. Everything just left you. No pain again. Praise the Lord. Let me pray for you. It never returns to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone with an eye problem. I don't know what the eye problem is, but it's living right now. Please confirm yourself. Eye problem. Check it. Check it. We are not playing games, please. Check it. Check it. Eye problems. I'm seeing a miracle happening right now. Eye problem. Confirm it and come out right now. I'm seeing this at least 10 people with this case. At least 10, like the lower abdominal region right here. You've been having se severe pain. It's like something pulls you there. Check it right now. You'll find out that you receive a miracle. At least 10 people. Please make your way to the front. At least 10 people. Check it right now. God is doing a miracle. Don't sit back. Inside and outside. Lower abdominal region. Lower abdominal region. That miracle is happening right now. Right now. Right now. At least 10 people. 10 people with that pain. As soon as you check it, make your way to the front. Celebrate Jesus. God is healing them. They are coming. They are coming. All of you, you can come and stand here. The moment you receive a miracle, please stand here. They will confirm you. At least 10 ladies right at this lower abdominal region hallelujah i'm seeing a gentleman you came here with a throat condition in fact um let me just describe to you they are telling you they want to take you somewhere to cut the throat it's like there is an elongation some i'm seeing them saying they want to use is it knife or something and cut something that an elongation who is that person the lord is healing you right now right now you can't swallow things you always feel like it's like bone but it's like there is something on your throat almost perpetually right now check it check it check it completely the power of god is coming upon you there is a lady god is healing your mother but the power of god will come upon you as a witness to that Lord, where is that lady right now? Where is that lady? Identify her, oh God, by the power of God. Right now. Right now. Right now. Please bring the lady out. 
God is healing her mother right at home. And God is using what is happening as, as a point of contact. As a point of contact. Shabaratoko subaradabaladaba. Nengreduso supratishi baladaba. I'm still seeing breast lump disappearing like a lump. I'm seeing one on the left left side. Please check it. Check it. When you receive a miracle, testimony is one way to seal it and keep it. The Lord is showing me three ladies. Your hair falls. Every time you go to comb your hair, you literally comb your hair and bring out a copious amount of your hair that is removing this thing is a serious thing you have used medication and it has not stopped a miracle is coming to those people right now a miracle is coming to those people yes let's take the testimony quickly please loud and straight to the point yes, the Lord. help I us sound please can you help us with this mic i used to have this pen down my stomach here but now i'm not feeling completely okay. gone yes are you sure yes. How long has it been? Come on, Koinonia. Let's not get too used to miracles in this place. Hallelujah. It never returns to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The next person, please. My goodness, look at what God is doing. God is giving people miracles. Go ahead. My name is like I'm pregnant. It's to come like pain as in I'm pregnant and I've been complaining that for months. But today, when the prayer was going on, I felt relieved and my stomach is In fact, open. as she was talking, hold on. The Lord opened my eyes. There is a lady... Your stomach is already swelling. This is almost, it's even beginning to embarrass you. It's not just like a stomach protruding. You are feeling it very hard and stiff. And it's, you are afraid because it's looking like it's a situation of a fibroid. Please check it right now. God is giving you a miracle. God is giving you a miracle. God bless you. Bless you quickly. When they say we should shout, praise the Lord. So I now shout. The stomach used to pay me even before I come to Zaria, but I can't feel it again. Completely gone. Yes. Give Jesus praise. It never returns again. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. Um, recently, I started having this eye pain. When I'm walking, doing other things, one of the eye get blank and I don't see again. But now, after the prayers, I feel one sharp pain and I used to have this abdominal pain almost all the time, but it just left me immediately. Give Jesus praise. It never returns to you again in the name of Jesus. Glory be to Jesus Christ. This abdominal pain starts two days ago. So, I came here and when I was praying, I just received total deliverance and complete deliverance please help them so that they don't fall on, on praise the lord the abdominal pain normally comes and go and when i was outside i was still feeling my stomach hooking such that i could not stand well i was bending and then when the man of god spoke i got up and stretched and to the glory completely of the lord, no pain again come on give jesus praise give jesus praise the lord mine is more of um creativity ideas that God is to give me every day when I'm in my quiet time and it's it happens that every time I try to push further I realize that there are a lot of setbacks distractions and uh, confusions that comes my way and right now, but what right happened? now when at the mention of the name Jesus I felt my body on fire I can't really understand what was going on. On fire, a restoration yes. of that creativity yes, co sir. comes to you yes, in the sir. name of the Lord Jesus amen. Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I came here with a severe eye eating. At a shout of Jesus, everything just wiped out. Completely. Believe me, that name works. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. I have a medical report from Shika consigning pain. In the pain. Joint. You went to the hospital. Yeah. What did they say is wrong with you? They, they couldn't see anything. They couldn't see anything. Yeah. Okay. And when you were praying, you prophesied that there is a uh, ten people here that that God is working on yes. their system. And, and now what has happened to you? The pain is gone. The pain is completely Even gone. The Jesus praise. Even the medical report is in my room. The medical report is in your room. Yeah. You go and check yourself, and you find out. All of you that were under the anointing, when you get up, don't just go back to your seat. Check. You will find out that all kinds of things have happened. You are not just falling for nothing. Praise the Lord. Praise, 
Praise the Lord. I'm trusting God for a new set of dentition. My teeth are just... Go ahead. <laughs> the power of God is on her. Oh, Father, complete what you have started in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands towards you in the name of Jesus. Because your faith can receive it, let it have it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Next person, please. Praise the Lord. After we take this trip, people, and, um, it's okay. Um, there's this pain that I usually used to have by, um, from under my armpit to the left side of my breast. Okay. So when um, you mentioned the keys, I was not too sure if I was the one. But later you specify by saying the, your left side of your breast. I noticed like it's swelling up and sometimes I very I feel like very, a swelling there. Yeah. yeah and now have you checked it? Yes. I, Is there I, anything I there? Okay Completely gone. Come, come on, give Jesus praise. It never returns again in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I want to thank God for the spirit of fear, as in I do get scared a lot, but I now I'm free in the name the of The spirit of fear. Come. It never returns to you again by the power of the Holy Ghost. You are free from the spirit of fear in Jesus' name. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. I want, to, I want to thank God for healing me from the lower abdomen. I used to have this pain right from child. When, when, I, was, when I was young, I used to have this pain. But when you were praying and you asked us to shout Jesus, I, I feel relieved. I just Completely. want to thank God. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my dear. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know. Sometimes second of August, this very month, this is my middle finger. Help her. Fire is landing on people. I started having pain around this region, affecting this finger mostly. I can barely use it, but since he prayed during the miracle session, I got healed. I announced. I saw I've that the baby I've a been finger. I've been shaking it and no I'm pain now. Come on, no give pain. Jesus praise, everybody. Praise. Where are the two ladies, Asabe, that I called? I called some two ladies, Asabe. The Lord is changing the story of your family. Listen, Mama is Asabe. Huh? Please, you should not stress Mama. If she's if she's out because she's sick, Mama is on as I make her door, please. You should not stress this old woman. If she should, even when she's coming out, carry her with the chair and just keep her here. We'll pray for her please the lord is is wiping the tears in your family you believe that when a word comes like this, it comes to give you liberty hold my hands father in the name of jesus i end this oppression in this family right now it goes forever in the name of jesus who has an elder brother who has an elder brother do you, do you have an elder brother yes. what is he doing he's a carpenter he's a carpenter yes the person i'm i'm talking about didn't go to school though is your brother yes. where is he he's in the village he's in the village god is going to lift him what is this thing that i'm seeing them <laughs> laughing at him and they are saying it it's not his fault that he didn't go to school even you is by the grace of god that you are here it's not like maybe yes. it's that your, your people are sponsoring you and all of that is the favor of god yes but god as a sign go and tell him call him after koinonia that the Lord said he's going to connect him to a rich man. He should be faithful to that man. Amen. That man will bless him. Amen. Father, let there be breakthrough in this family. In the name of Jesus. Asabe. Gabriel. Oh, your name is Gabriel. Your name too is Gabriel, sir. Who is Titi Lyo? Titi Lyo. I'm hearing a name, Titi Lyo. Please let's save time. Our time is gone. Um, we still have to pray for the sick. Titi Layo. I'm hearing the name Titi Layo. Titi Layo. Who is working here, sir? You're, you're working. You're both working. Okay. I'm going to pray for you because I'm seeing the Lord bringing. The Lord is. Sir. It won't be too long. You are leaving Gusau. We spoke, at least we spoke. That one is not word of knowledge. We, we spoke about it, but it won't be too long. The Lord is lifting you to another place. Go and write it down. This will happen to you. It won't be too long. Write it down. You will come back and testify before the. It's not a disadvantage. It's something that will bless you in no small way, because you have come with your heart open. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, I lay my hands. I pray. 
right now that you bring your word to pass concerning his life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hear breakthrough for you, sir. This is what I hear. The Lord is saying I should announce breakthrough to you. Father, I hold his hands and I announce breakthrough in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Your mother is sick. What's wrong with her? She has been bleeding for the past one year. Bleeding? You, you can see the kind of demonic thing we are talking about here. Huh? Your mother bleeding for one year non-stop. How about that? And you fell under the anointing? No, sir. You, you are just standing to agree yes, for her. Okay, sir. no problem. We have a session for that. But since you came out, hold my hands. Hold my hands. Look at me. Do you believe God will touch your mother? Where is she? Where is home? Taraba. Taraba State. Yes, sir. You are from Taraba. Yes, sir. Lord, show Mama mercy right now in the name of Jesus Christ. As it touches you, it touches her. Please don't just come out at will. Ah, you are related to her? Your sister is Titilayo. Yes, sir. Where is she? She's in Kaduna. What's she doing? She's schooling at Kaduna. She's schooling. Okay, let's pray for her. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, what are you doing? You? I'm a student, sir. Where? KPSS. Eh? Knowledge is power. Secondary school. Okay, knowledge is power. Yes, sir. Your sister is where? Kaduna. Kaduna. Yes, sir. Tell her, is she married? No, sir. Tell her marriage is coming for her. Are you hearing me? You believe it? Because she has been praying about this. Your mother, where's your mother? Your mother has been joining her to pray. Yes, your mother even went to a man of God and they prayed about yes. this thing. Is yes, that true? Your mother went to a man of God to pray. Go and tell her that the Lord is saying marriage comes for her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns. Hallelujah. Now, please, this is the time to minister specially to sick people. You know the nature of our programs here. We will need a lot of time. So, if you are not sick, if you are escorting somebody, please just bring the person and go back. And once they pray for you, don't wait for another prayer. One touch is okay. Some of you, when they pray for you, you refuse. You still stand back. Please, once they pray for you, just check yourself and go back. Praise the Lord. And then, don't keep going back and coming out and saying you are doing this and that. If you came with somebody who is sick, now is the time to bring them out while we are praying. Please arrange them. Now is Mama's time. All, this, all our mothers, they can make their way now. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wings. Come far and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God. Please clear the way for them. Clear the way for sick people. From heaven above with wings. Come far and love. Those under the anointing, just, just carry them and keep them gently somewhere. hallelujah now let's save time while we are praying for the sick all of you begin to submit your prayer request please i permit you to put on your phone if you need to call your loved ones to send you prayer requests call them because what god is doing tonight is unusual call them and tell them there's fire upon this place they should submit their prayer request ushers please begin to go around those online those who are connecting with us through the internet they can also connect by faith as we trust God for miracles. Worship team, please get set. You'll be giving us powerful worship songs. We'll just pray for our elderly ones. Let the Lord touch them and then he will give us peace. Please and um, please, um, when we pray for you, you clear the way. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. Stretch your hands and let's pray for our mother. Awesome is your name. 
wipe the tears of your parents listen let me tell you any child hear me i'm saying this especially to we young people any child that makes himself an instrument of pain to your mother do you know you bring a curse upon your life when you do that whatever spirit is bringing hardship on our mother and making her children not to succeed the way it should pray for her children in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome, sir. Please sit down. Who's your dad? Welcome, sir. Who's your straight, straight to the point. His legs are swollen because it's been long I saw him. He's been, he doesn't breathe well. And at the same time, he's having problem with mama. None of his children look at him except me. The same problem that mama is having, that he prayed for. It's just similar thing. We are eight. Oh, it's paining you, sir. We are going to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, stretch your hands towards our daddy. Please participate in the service. That's why you came. Hallelujah. No, no, no. Daddy, sit down. Please sit down. Sit down. Please, let's stretch our hands. 25 years of witchcraft. This is witchcraft. This is not sickness. 25 years of wickedness and oppression. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be deliverance, O oh God. Baba, I'm going to pray for you. Well, we are praying for you now. Jesus Christ is going to touch you. Father, let Baba return with a testimony. I lay my hands in the name of Jesus and I cancel the plague of witchcraft in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, after today, check him and don't cry. Don't cry, eh? Clean your tears. Clean your tears. Baba, they will watch you and they will see the improvement and you will let us know. Since it's not something we can check, you are already walking in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus that the power of God will come here right now as I lay my hands upon you, I want you to believe. We all came here because we trust Jesus Christ. And there will be a miracle. Those of you who are sitting down, be connecting to the healing anointing, you are the one who will be doing this. The goal is not for one person to do this. That as you are watching, something will come upon you. Thank you, Jesus. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do my Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're oh God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at a very awesome serious situation. Can you flash this, this baby? Look at, can you believe? Listen, can you believe for God's sake that this baby, as beautiful as this child is, the brain is not developing? Look at this. Who told you the brain is not developing? The doctor, and we've done CT scan. You've done CT scan. You have your evidence. They said the brain is not developing. Remember, remember our teaching. A body without a spirit. There must be a spirit that is stopping this brain. How can a baby like this? This is an apostle. This is a prophet. This is a great man. Oh, what male or female? Male. Male. Man of God in the making. And a spirit come. How would you like to have a child? 
that do you know what it means for the brain not to develop that child becomes like an imbecile forever in the name that is above all names we lay hands upon this child we are not only praying that God will heal him but God will use him my God I pray right now let the brain begin to develop we cause the spirit that is responsible for this wickedness right now in the name of Jesus from village I go a lesson I will charm from village look at this mama went for election they fired something upon her head now she's mad is she mad is she your dog now yes. you are mad no you are you are not mad in the name of Jesus say I'm not mad I'm not mad in the name of Jesus whoever organized that charm on your head it returns back to them sevenfold in the name of Jesus Christ Mama, I'm praying for you right now. Every charm, every enchantment, you came to this place tonight. It ends in the name of Jesus. You are her daughter, you are her daughter, in the name of Jesus Christ. Even as it releases your mother, it releases you. Mama, you are free in the name of Jesus Christ. What's wrong? Accident, sir. Accident. Yes, sir. This guy, for a long time, the spirit of death has been following you. Eh? come do you know why the spirit of death is disturbing you i'm looking at you don't feel embarrassed eh i'm looking at you but i'm seeing you smoking something eh tell me the truth don't tell me this is what death would have killed you you are smoking a uh, uh, what do they call this thing eh? in jahem you go yes, sir. is that not true yes, sir. you are smoking the devil wants to kill you this is look at look at this Look at this. Can you see this? Look at this. Because this is not the first time. Every time I see this guy, I see a whirlwind on his head. You, you know that the devil is after your life. You are now adding a go to it. Jesus came that you'll be saved. Are you getting me? You are ready to give your life to Jesus Christ. Genuinely. Eh? Oh, oh, you are. Oh, 
you are still with those your friends yes, sir. you are still with those your friends yes, we cancel those relationships right now mm. i'm seeing you sitting down with a group of people yes. they are smoking and they are giving you to smoke but you are saying you have repented yes, and they are even laughing at you yes, you have to leave them we cancel that relationship in jesus name mm. the bible hear me don't say i'm not doing it but i'm sitting down where others are doing it the bible says blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of the scornful he said but his delight is in the law of the lord and on that law doth he meditate day and night i cause that madness in the name of jesus christ and i pray for supernatural healing look at me look at me lift your hands forget about the wound lift it up careful you broke the hand oh it can't lift Oh, I say, no, 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 if you can't lift, don't, don't harm yourself. I thought you broke your bone. That's why I was asking you to lift it. Father, let there be a miracle right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. And anybody who smokes Igbo in this place, if you know you smoke Igbo or codeine, altar, once I make the altar call, just run and come and kneel down here. Because tonight is your night of salvation. Please, don't play games with your destiny. Anything you smoke, anything you drink that is outside the jurisdiction of decency the moment there's time for altar call please make your way here we love you but then the lord wants to touch you let's hurry up because our time is gone your name is out
Love upon your feet. I'm going to be praying on the request right now. At the same time, an altar call is called. An altar call will be going. Those who need Jesus Christ, you are here right now, inside and outside. There are some of our brothers who are smokers and ladies. The ones that I spoke to. Now is the time. You can come before the presence of God. Don't feel bad. We're a family. And any other person. There are those who are saying, Lord, I'm tired of the way my life is. I need a new beginning. As we pray, please come and wait here. Join this lady very quickly. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. Please, let's save time. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. God bless you. A new beginning. God is giving you a new beginning. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. You are saying, Lord Jesus, I make up my mind to walk with you. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, are you celebrating them? God is saving sinners. Keep coming from outside. Please clear the way for them if they are coming. Salvation is a very serious issue. Clear the way for them so that they'll come. Don't let any devil stop you. You are welcome. I know we're out of time. But please make your way to the front right now. Make your way to the front. We love you. No man condemns you. He can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you here. I don't care what you have done or what you have not done. I want you to know that His Majesty can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand and say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died and rose again. I'm tired of the way my life is. I surrender everything to you. Seriously and completely. From this night, take over my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Let your life come upon me. I break free from habits, from sins, and everything that destroys my life. From today, I'm a child of God. I am saved in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for these ones. Unashamedly, they have come before you. Preserve them by your power in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that you will use them mightily in the name of Jesus. I break the power of sin over your life. You will never return, especially for those of you who are victims of addictions and smoking, you will never return to it again in the name of Jesus Christ. That power is broken from off your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to follow a gentleman. They will have your details. And then on Tuesday, unfailingly, please be around. Um, meet with the prayer department and um, will fire you up. You'll be with them for at least a month. They will guide you. The gentleman is waving his hand. Salute them, everybody. Congratulate them. Stretch your hands towards a prayer request in one minute. Please, everybody, rise. We're rounding up. Stretch your hands towards a prayer request. Your request is here. Begin to speak. Prophesy. Prophesy over it in the name of Jesus Christ. Prophesy over it. Prophesy over it. Lord, unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Are you praying? Shabakata pradegede bele de bosh. Reketa tatata kata pradegede bele de bosh. Lord, do miracles. Every spirit that is responsible for the troubles that are written here, we judge that spirit. Every spirit, every covenant, every influence. Makata lato desetebe. Manda brendo so so prida balada bash kapreti gede bele de bosh. Brado so prete kete bele de bosh. Every spirit responsible for barrenness here, yeah. responsible for any setback, in the name of Jesus we challenge it. By the blood of Jesus we challenge it. By the blood of Jesus we challenge it. By the blood of Jesus we challenge it. Lord, let your people have testimonies. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We declare that every request, every request that is presented here is turned into a testimony. 
in the name of Jesus Christ and you will stand to testify before the people of God in the name of Jesus Christ I pray now lift your hands and receive the prophecy I decree and I declare over you every confusion in your life every cry for direction right now in the name of Jesus may you receive direction for the next level of your life receive direction for the next level of your life receive direction for the next level of your life every area of confusion i arrest it right now you will hear a voice from behind telling you this is the way in the name of jesus christ for those who are students i pray for your academics the exams that are about to come your best result in your various institutions this exam is what will produce it in the name of the lord jesus christ may you record five points in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray for every family represented here whatever has stagnated your family by this anointing i declare move forward move forward move forward in the name of jesus christ everything that has covered your glory so that the glory of the lord upon your life will not be seen in the name of jesus we tear that veil off we tear that veil off by the power of the holy spirit whoever needs to help you before next miracle service i call them forth into your life mysterious help us mysterious help us in the name of jesus christ i pray for you fresh grace for prayer fresh anointing for prayer every lack of passion for the things of god i kill it right now in the name of jesus every carnality and flesh and wordlessness and prayerlessness that is eating up your life it dies a natural death here tonight in the name of jesus christ i pray for you with these hands that are lifted go and begin to produce results go and heal the sick go and open doors for the oppressed in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray for families that are trusting god for miracle marriages we release those marriages right now i pray for families that are trusting god for miracle jobs we release those jobs right now please believe me as i pray we release those jobs right now in the name of the lord jesus christ anyone here who the devil is eyeing for death that the devil has said you will not see the end of this year in the name of jesus we lift up that embargo we lift up that embargo favor like you have never seen receive it right now open doors like you have never seen receive it right now breakthroughs like you have never seen receive it right now i speak life to every dying thing in your life in the name of jesus christ whoever has rejected you may they look for you in the name of jesus christ i command prophetic dreams mysterious spiritual experiences may god show you the solution to your problems in dreams and visions whoever is behind the failure of your life we command judgment upon them in the name of the lord jesus christ i prophesy unto you access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to deep revelation access to insight in the spirit whenever they are looking for men to favor may they find you may they find you in the name of jesus you are blessed in the city and blessed in the country you are blessed in your going out and blessed in your coming in every tongue that rises up against you will be judged in the name of jesus i declare that the seal of the blood is upon you you have no covenant with failure you have no covenant with death may god use you mightily 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 i declare may the mantle of honor 
come upon your life that mantle that makes men honor you mysteriously i release it upon your life receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus the mantle of honor i pray for you extraordinary intelligence levels of mental acumen in the name of the lord jesus christ extraordinary intelligence i cast out the spirit of fear fear of the future fear of death i rebuke it from your life in jesus name and every depression upon your spirit i release you from it right now every voice that has told you you will not succeed we cancel that voice right now in the name of jesus finally i pray for you passion for the things of god hunger for intimacy with the holy spirit grace for fasting and prayer genuine fasting and prayer access to spiritual power activations of the gifts of the spirit visions and and the move of the spirit upon your life in the name of jesus christ as for me and my house i will serve the lord most people who serve the lord is because they have given up on the matters of life there is no hope of sending any child to school there is no hope of anything they know they would die whether or not they serve the lord so they say okay since i have two years left let me just try to do something no our generation has brought an option be poor and fail and serve the lord or be blessed and be occupied trying to make a living who gave us that option as for me and my house i will serve the lord that one day i will come to your house on a weekday and hear sounds of worship from your gate not cassette you and your four children are serving the lord and i say by two o'clock i thought you should be earning a living and he said he showed me another system now we are serving the lord and visitors pull their mouth while they are languishing in the squalor of rebellion and watch you say pastor alpha you are serving the lord jedediah is 12 years and his teenager friends are there all around smoking their destinies away and this child is there serving the lord it is selfishness and wickedness that makes us to forget the generation that is coming i'm sorry to say it and i i love our parents we have many of our elderly people here i love them but one of the mistakes that our fathers made was they were very selfish they did not remember that a generation was coming so all they did was to educate their minds and look for food to eat there's hardly any heritage given to a young man every young man starts almost from ground zero spiritually financially the time a young man should use building his spirit is fighting warfare because the chains that have held him at 30 he must spend one year contending for victory as for me and my house i can't claim it for everybody but as for me and my house we will serve the lord how many of us here got born again directly by our parents how many of you some of us were just around and salvation by the mercy of god met you in one sunday school some of you salvation met you at the point of death did you know that for many of us we never had the talk about god we had godliness in a religious way every time there was bible study something happened a sound in the zinc demotion that was imminent or something that sponsored some emotional reaction say as for me and my house say as for me and my house i will serve the lord are we together yes it matters that we make this decision right now that we will serve the lord we will serve the lord 
I've been doing a lot of counseling lately, especially for our dear ones that are getting married. And I look at them. My first concern is will your home serve the Lord? Will your life serve the Lord? Let me tell you, there is a wicked Babylonian financial system there that was designed to make sure you don't serve the Lord. How can one man do five jobs because he's trying to pay rent? It's a cause. You wake up by six, do a job to 12, and Satan makes sure a stipend comes from there. And then you start another one till four. And your body is weak, but you know if you don't do this, you will not eat well. And you start another one. And in the next five years, that man dies and leaves seven children. Look at our dear mothers. God, something is wrong, go. Listen to me. I came tonight to talk to you from the depth of my heart. It's a vow. I bailed myself. That's the truth. You bail yourself through a commitment of obedience. But my job is to share this with you. That if we don't wake up and join ignorant people or this proud religiosity that only focuses on the matters of godliness and leaves the matters of life one day you will stand and watch you will be a mighty man of god with a big parish and your wife and you will watch your children with pta letter come and stand before you we've been expelled not because we smoked not because we drank because the means to make it happen was not there you will be in a church and the owner will come and lock the church while service is going on and drive you out as for me and my house everything that must be put in place in my life to allow me serve God I will put in place if you can make that commitment tonight we have achieved something so far it says the things that pertain unto life and godliness and those things the equipping comes through knowledge 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 there is no shortcut to greatness. There is no shortcut to glory. Sacrifice has always been the non-negotiable condition. The sacrifice of your commitment, your life, your resources, your attention. You may not have the best of, of atmosphere and environment, but there is a determination that superimposes those things. For the sake of my generation, I will present Jesus. Are we blessed the things that pertain unto life and godliness there are some of us and it really grieves my heart as young as we are condition as we call it has taken away our focus from God there are some of us here early 20s yet you have to be sending something home God is calling you into ministry but the focus is not there the moment he's speaking here comes the bills here comes the whatever and you know that your poor aged mother who couldn't go to school our fathers many of them largely disobedient and proud people although they don't have any result you see that and they yoke all of that the average home right now has many relatives waiting for their elder brother to marry because he's the one who will continue the education for them if all you see is poverty you are not seeing well you must see an attack on a generation if all you see is sickness you are not seeing well you must see an attack look at the long-term effect of that a day will come our men will no longer go to church because they have to work all day on sunday to add to it it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow so by the time the father is not there to raise the child the devil positions somebody who is now employed who now teaches that child is, is, whether the father is a pastor or a bishop is not the issue look at the children of men of God this is a cry and a burden that is boiling in my heart we must redeem not only ourselves but redeem a generation we must start thinking transgenerationally don't say you are too young 
if the entire scope of your life is just me my marriage my home my this no you must start thinking you see that when koinonia started this young boy seated here was in the loins of prophecy today he's now hearing you will be surprised one day now this small boy you see will be going to secondary school one day he'll be writing jam and you will open your eyes and see that i made a mistake i cannot correct again many of us seated here the reason why our lives are delayed is because we have to pay the price that was made by our parents before we start building our own lives you've not even started building your own life yet you are paying a debt you know nothing about then when you are 50 and have paid then you now start your own life it's an attack listen to me very carefully it's an attack an attack on the integrity of god an attack on a generation that can seek god all these revelations that we dish out in the body of christ will soon become useless if we ignore these things because there will be nobody to hear them again all the dimensions of heavens and the stars and the constellations we would talk to ourselves as men of god on stage while everybody runs around everywhere trying to make a living make a living is a cause there are many of our parents is in their deathbed they will confess that i was called to be a prophet to my generation called to be a prophet they would have been at the dimension of benihin today imagine how many destinies would have been changed if they answered the call but they were hijacked and they only see the visions in their parlor god shows them global events and they are there no grace and influence to effect it you read about these generals some of them can hold one year of prayer you know sometimes men of god hold prayer meetings is it not those who have eaten that will come if i hold a prayer meeting five days in a week pastor alpha you're a lecturer except god grants you grace should you can't be effective you are only effective when you have options and that's what satan wants to make sure a whole generation does not have no option no option there is an attack on our generation we must open our eyes and see it this is not just the issue of money this is not the issue of influence this is the issue of the destiny of a generation the prophetic destiny the prophets labored in the bible and prophesied about our generation and they died not seeing this now we have come in the scene and many of us are just playing games with our lives doing the same old things that brought pain to us so that our own children will cry i want to serve the lord not because i'm a preacher i want to serve the lord because my life was meant to be a revelation of his glory i want to serve the lord i want to be the one to coach my children not sunday school son sit down let me teach you the bible not police station teach my child how to live not a rehab center teach your child or daughter how to live is god speaking to us tonight i'm challenging you there is a serious burden in my heart if we do not arise for our generation let me tell you very soon you will be laboring on your child and the lawless children of another person who is not listening to what i'm saying will be there to become the strongholds we not only must care about our children we must care about our generation one child 90 percent of our children are influenced to be bad they are not bad on their own you are laboring to train them there is another godless man somewhere and they all meet in the same place and cain dominates abel and make our children feel sorry for being christians you look at many of us here you are looking at me now look how ashamed you are if you are in the social sphere now you are in church you are jumping but once you are there are you drinking no i don't drink are you disannoyed and they look at you oh, what a child this guy's eyes have no and you feel so guilty 
for loving God and being attention and paying attention to Him. It's like the in thing now is rebellion. You are a man to the degree to which you are stubborn, lawless, rebellious, and proud. That's what we are marketed to a generation. That is the portrait of a superhero that our children are learning. If you must be a superhero, be rebellious, be a bully, be everything but a Christian. The average young child is not interested in church again. Again. You invite them. Find out how many teenagers come for koinonia. You'll be surprised. There are young people, there are old people, but the teenagers don't come. It's not because it's night. They stroll around and then go around and do a lot of things and Satan comes. He wants to capture that generation. But in the name of Jesus Christ, there are people who will say no way. There are people who will create a spiritual barricade that as the priest of my home, no way. Satan, there is no entrance. Huh? That gentleman who was talking about Aleko or whatever it is, look at now. That a time will come, your child will be saying, Mommy, we are from Benway, but what is that? You say, I settled it already. Don't worry. It was well settled. That, that discussion, just one day I will tell you about the story. That once upon a time in our village, people don't reach 30, but I stood as an altar and I settled it. Are we together? And one of the deceptions, let me begin to build my discussion tonight now. One of the deceptions that I think God is granting me grace to connect tonight is what I call the danger of imbalance. Write it down. The danger, the catastrophic danger of imbalance. It not only matters that we communicate truth, it matters that the truth we communicate must be the whole counsel of God. Everybody say the whole counsel of God. The whole counsel of God is a definition of all his intention. Everything he desires for a people within a time period to know about him represents the whole counsel of God for that dispensation. And one of the things that you see Satan playing out right now is an attempt to use religion as a tool that sponsors imbalance in our quest, seeing then that he cannot stop us from having an appetite for God, he now begins to sell imbalance to believers. And let me tell you something, brothers and sisters, imbalance is as dangerous as falsehood. Imbalance is as dangerous as a lie. Let's examine a few things before I talk about imbalance. I shared one time about three great errors that the Lord revealed to me in the body of Christ. If you remember, when we were talking about the body of Christ, let me do a quick recap. That the Lord began to reveal to me that there were three great errors in the body of Christ. The first error is found in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. He said, the Spirit speaketh expressly. The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. We're examining the first error now. Giving heed to seducing spirits and then the doctrine of devils. Everyone say the doctrine of devils. Another word for this is apostasy. Apostasy, a deviation from God's known pattern of operation. Apostasy. The first error that the body of Christ has to contend with is the error of apostasy. Listen to my message, the apostate church. Apostasy, a deviation from the truth and also a deviation from God's pattern. Two things there. A deviation from the truth is called apostasy. But a deviation from the pattern of communicating that truth is also apostasy. Even if the information is correct, but the spiritual system of transferring it 
is wrong it is still apostasy are we together in god's dealings with men both the information and the pattern are important not just the information don't just say the most important thing is that i'm healed the most important thing is that i prosper the most important thing is that i get anointing no sir there is a predefined pattern when god looks at you and you are doing business with god what you got is not as important as how it came don't just say i was anointed don't just say i was prosperous don't just say i i got married don't just say i had a child god is obsessed with patterns that if you must host his glory then there must be a formation that must be according to pattern apostasy i teach that there are two dimensions to apostasy number one the communicator of the message himself not being of god that's the first dimension where they whether as a man of god as a businessman whoever attempting to communicate anything the plan from the beginning was deception intrinsically the communicator himself is of the devil there is such a possibility in the body of christ and in our environment not just apostate informations apostate people people who are not they were never never of god from the first place are we blessed and then number two the people the communicators of those truths may be genuine but the information they are communicating is a doctrine of demons you can be genuine sincere let me take ministry as a case study you can be a sincere man of god you love god you are not fake but the content of your communication is a doctrine that is not sponsored by the spirit of christ the bible says that some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and then doctrines of demons i can be a genuine man of god genuinely anointed by god but because of a system the bible calls seduction are we together now i can deviate from god's way of doing things and now become a communicator i am not fake but my message is not genuine both of these cases can be classified as apostasy so that's the first error the second error that i teach is the error of individualism also the error of indifference write it down indifference what we call i don't care attitude right individualism we don't think kingdom we don't think generational we think me so if a jimmy's leg is having a problem provided it has not affected me it's none of my business this is where many many men of god many many of we pastors pentecostals especially have missed it we have missed it big time in this area we are so individual individualistic we don't care about what is happening to the body provided my church provided my life is immune for it, from it to hell with the body are we together yeah so if the danger has not come to meet me it doesn't matter if an arm robber comes to steal in a pastor's church nearby it was not my church it was not my member my kingdom financier was not robbed so pastor may god bless you if someone dies provided he's not a member of my church it's amazing how we lead as mentor people to deliberately select being in the body is not enough you must be associated with me to be able to enjoy certain benevolence that is meant for the body it's a poisonous spirit the error of indifference the error of individualism when god begins to build his army his system of operation is that he takes us beyond individualism and connects us as an organism if your leg is having pains your head can pain you because of the leg is that true um we're returning back from kano and we stopped at a filling station to get fuel 
and one guy was marketing a funny product you know these guys that market something at the filling station and he said um there's a the drug or the lotion whatever it is is for teeth <laughs> but you rub it on your leg <laughs> yes he said you don't have to rub the thing on your teeth you just rub it on your leg now that, that's a body consciousness at least i didn't buy it but he taught me that the leg is related to the teeth because we have been taught to apply drugs only where it hurts and leave other parts and he said no no let me show you another formula you can apply it in the leg but it can touch the teeth that means i can pray from zaria and god can preserve kenneth copeland because it is the body I can hear that there is an attack on a man of God and not say, after all they don't listen say no no Lord this whatever it is he's part of the body his integrity is our integrity as the body and Lord arise in your mercy for your namesake but we keep becoming individualistic you ask believers what is your pride our pride let me tell you the pride of our generation three things one revelation Rema the extent to which you bring an exegesis of the truth and nothing is wrong with that right greek words hebrew words play around with all kinds of concordances and then dish out mysteries we love that two prophecy if i give you a prophetic word which is not bad three anointing and our definition of anointing is fall down not result fall down just make sure you hit that bench as a testament that the communicator is having something and so this erroneously become the pivot of our pursuit we're looking for revelation we're looking for an ability to communicate which is is is, is to be desired and then we're looking for an anointing to make sure when we step into a meeting people just fall up and down and when these things happen we believe that we are fine and we don't extend the scope of our alliance to god to extend beyond our personal comforts to think body in terms of administration you know i love koinonia thank god this is where he's planted me but in terms of the health of the church i am passionately concerned about the body of christ just follow me we are going somewhere tonight are we blessed the third error that i teach um, i have taught this already so is what i call exaggerated confrontation of error this is where it even gets sad exaggerated confrontation of error that means that error that is attempted to be corrected but not from a standpoint of love error that is attempting to be corrected from a standpoint of intrinsic intimidation by the supposed corrector now listen very careful you see please come here Jimin. can i use you Amen. when you see a Jimin, one word you think wealth finances right well anointing too anointing at least last week you saw it praise god now watch this chances are that if god has called a Jimin to represent um that dimension of maybe the holy spirit and finances to people and i have a bias with finances either as a result of men, my mentality or my frustrations two of them can cause the same thing i can have a poor mentality or i can be secretly frustrated now if there is an imbalance in a Jimmy's life or his way of communicating that chances are that because i was angry since even before the imbalance came now that i have found a scapegoat of a lapse in him i will correct it in a way you know it was paining me this is not the point is not to correct the point is to vent out pain there is a big this exaggerated confrontation is even more deadly than error itself i once had a well somewhere a man of god was talking about those he was saying they teach people how to pray in tongues somewhere you know trying to be sarcastic that man himself does not pray in tongues he doesn't believe it but there is no there's no legitimate case for him to fight it so he now routes through a church or a man of god that he sees teaching people he now uses that one exception this is how you know error is exaggerated 
a man of god or a businessman or whatever picks one single error and robs it off beyond the proportion of his relevance you know that the, the goal is not to sponsor correction the goal is to help manage intimidation are we together now so Ejimi talks about money and all of that and all of a sudden i'm there in my frustration and i turn and i say be careful all these guys that just talk about money all the time the truth of the matter is that i may be right in speaking about that unique situation but it's not coming from a standpoint that wants to contribute to the health of the body i am only communicating because i am intrinsically frustrated thank you sir are we blessed some of us here seated looking at me have become victims even of this it tells on how we hate anointed people it tells on how we hate wealthy people are we together now yes and so we try everybody right now is in the ministry of correction that is the latest anointing that is going all around everybody is correcting everybody everybody once you have access to a mic and you can talk and people can hear you everybody is correcting everybody let me tell you this the greatest danger in the church now is not error the greatest danger is imbalance and this imbalance has come from this third point this is where i want to build my case tonight so pay attention so that you find out whether you are part of it and trust god to help you tonight everybody shout imbalance, imbalance. there is something about the limitation of pentecostals that our orthodox brothers and sisters capitalize on and use it as the basis why you should not be open to the things of the holy spirit then there are things that the pentecostals use as their excuse for thinking an orthodox lifestyle is too mean and basic and all of that and all of them may have some sense of justification but the truth is that there is an inner anger for one another just waiting for a legitimate excuse are we together now yeah whether it is an issue of marriage or finances or fidelity or issues that have to do with um, administration and leadership whatever it is how you know that correction is not coming from a sincere point is the exaggeration exaggeration i always say you use a, a hammer to kill a fly a simple tap on that fly it would die but when you use hammer you were angry it's not about the fly the fly just happens to be what the hammer is hitting obviously that hammer was not designed for the fly it's just that the fly got in the way of the hammer and boy will that hammer hit the fly there is a spirit of pride listen carefully it looks like it's coming from God but i'm exposing lucifer there is something satan is doing in the especially among we men of god that god has privileged to have access to revelation and anointing and a dimension of the miraculous pride is gradually eating us up because we believe that because of the little results we have we have authority by ourselves to correct everybody and everything every man of god is trying to show what another man is doing wrong everyone is trying to show that this is wrong why are you praying like this the other one will say you too why are you keeping quiet when you are praying the other one will say what is the meaning of warfare the other one will say keep waiting demons are coming see let me tell you this let me tell you this listen very carefully listen carefully if we do not trust god to rise up and correct these imbalances we are going to authorize satan to destroy us god's goal is not to produce koinonia in all the earth if god gives me an assignment and says apostle through you the gospel will get to the ends of the earth he was talking to all the people who will come out spiritually and prophetically through my loins through there are ministries that will come out of me they are an extension of that instruction the idea is not to turn every believer in nigeria into koinonia it's a failed project from day one and anybody who knows god will never be part of that failed agenda so god is not glorified when koinonia has more members god is glorified when the kingdom advances 
listen very carefully because right now the entire scope of our soul winning agenda is sometimes is even sheep stealing i say this because i love the body you are sitting quietly taking fresh air someone comes to preach to you you say okay i'm already born again as soon as he's leaving you another person is coming say your brother just be say it doesn't matter you just listen have you have you been given um, um are you are you aware of our church services you say yes you say come and the next time you see him look how people feel guilty and blackmailed because i invited you for koinonia you didn't come and you make it look like you are the worst sinner in the whole world you are just because you did not come that's not salvation that's pressure like banks give people target bring this by this month we have begun to propose some of those campaigns and we must be careful kingdom advancement is not the advancement of a name of a church is the advancement of the agenda of god in the hearts of men and across the spheres now it 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 is important that the individual ministries do their best to be the the platforms for people to be saved and equipped but that's not the idea there are people it's one of the reasons why pastors never invite people to their pulpit because someone comes and in two minutes before he preaches he has said almost 90 things about his church and sometimes some can even be sarcastic to downplay the church that now invited them you hear about people who go for conferences and before you know it while in that conference he saw a keyboard is playing well he saw a worshiper singing well and the man of god will collect their numbers travel back and now call them and begin to indoctrinate them you are, are you you sound too good your pastor doesn't deserve you come and join a moving train we say and then the member now leaves his church to join the supposed moving train and then we make it look like god is only with us it is pride let me repeat the idea that makes you believe you are the only representation of God in a territory is pride. The day Koinonia believes that we are the only and even the ultimate representation of God in this region is a sign that error has already eaten beginning from me to everyone. May God forbid it. Are we together now? Yes. this is the basis behind the show of superiority from men of god to churches to business people imbalance imbalance the the inability to construct the truth of god's word so that it becomes edifying to you and to the body now let me teach you something the dealings of god has a side effect watch this i've shared it here that if god calls me into the healing ministry watch this because of the character and the nature of my training are we together it will require a level of meticulousness in a dimension chances are that because of my concentration i will trivialize other matters of the kingdom too they are important but because they were not captured in my training process i will assume that they are not important are we together now so when i now come up this is the healing evangelist evangelist joshua selman and i'm healing and when i see somebody in another dimension is the reason why we reject certain ministries in the body because we have not been trained you see young people come and dance and while they are dancing someone is just waving his head and say what a wasted generation simply because the way god trained you that was not captured as part of the experience of the training so you can downplay it then to mean that these are not serious things when people come to church they sleep and snore every other time until the man of god comes in now the uh, god has been moving since praise and worship you were not taught to respect it a time of worship people are rolling on the floor god is speaking to people someone has received his breakthrough already but you were trained that until someone stands on stage so if the man of god now comes and starts rolling you say what kind of church is this you don't preach here yeah? i want you to listen to me very carefully why am i teaching you this because god is helping us to be a blessing to many others are we together in balance there are many people in the body of christ whose ministries have been strangled no room to find expression simply because the man of god who founded the church the experience 
of allowing those ministries to find expression were not captured in his dealings with God and so because of that the moment you see any other ministry that is outside your scope of understanding you fight it you abuse it you can call it of the devil you blackmail it amazing do you know why God limits you like this so that it is in partnership with other dimensions in the body you see how complete the body is you see that so if God has granted me grace to walk in a dimension of the teaching ministry and I don't walk say in miracles and Sam come Sam Sam walks in the miraculous it is my identifying with Sam it now supplies a dimension of God that I wouldn't have seen are we together now for some the way god dealt with him it was just vision and power so when sam comes to the stage he said look stop all this grammar of bible study let's go straight to wheelchairs he is also in error he does not know it's just that his own nature of ministry is what is desired by the masses they want power immediately so chances are that you will see that in sam's church you receive miracles but there's no spiritual growth because the system he just the it was the god almighty god that was the revelation that was given to him for you the rabbi of rabbis that's what you got so you can sit down and teach one series for one year and then i reject you i say sam all it takes is mental transformation not power people need to be leaders and then sam is saying continue there you are watching your members crying what they need is power both of them god is with them but they believe god is not with each other you see that mistake it's me please can i use you again please come and then all of a sudden this guy comes he's a leader he's an entrepreneur he's a businessman and i said look all these your business principles i laid hands on somebody a millionaire's child without knowing any finance thing and all of a sudden they gave me an estate all these things you are trying to teach people is nonsense teach them power and estate comes and the members ignore this principle and they find out that estate didn't come after 10 years the man is married now the preacher got an estate but the hearer didn't get it are we together now all three of them now chances are that a jimmy may be angry and say look at this guy power 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 let's see whether you ever rise to the government this is the fight now everybody let me tell you what satan does when satan wants to destroy you if he knows there's nothing he can do about your anointing he covers you from seeing the body so the only thing you see is your church and your performance and based on that he will now use supposed loyal sons to keep you in that state the power when you came into that meeting you know i like you you don't talk anything no verse bible was not open straight to power and he say you mean it you were impressed say yes now this is a group here hiding themselves and shortchanging themselves in imbalance yet they will believe that because the man sees visions he has the entire scope of what god is doing and then he will have the effrontery to now indoctrinate his members into believing that anytime you see our teacher man or anytime you see our businessman ignore them just get power and rest and that's what is happening so we have a congregation of people today who have no regard for the word of god turn to philippians you see them just snoring once you hear so, ah, 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 you see, that's right this is i mean we are, we are in church now that's all people want and while that shout is going on the business guy says when you finish go and pay your rent shout roll on the floor your rent is that the tribute collectors are there and you can't say he's not godly because he's rich and he's with part of the money your church was built so the pastor can't shout at him you know what it will mean to you look at the confusion now let me tell you no one of these three will admit they are incomplete it is one of the hardest things for men of god to do to admit that regardless of what they have seen 
they need to spread their horizon beyond the scope that was revealed to them to see the body it is in the seven lampstands that the fullness of christ was seen the seven lampstands i had a voice when i turned i didn't see christ i saw the complete church with all the dimensions when I saw the complete church, I saw the fullness of Christ. If I had seen two of them, I would see only his hands and think God is a hand. Then I see another church and see his eyes and think all to God is prophecy. Then I see another church and I see his legs and I think all in life is progress. But the complete church revealed the complete Christ. Is God speaking to us? This is a revelation that will bless you beyond imagination. And so Ejimi now organizes a seminar to correct people and gathers all his members and say, look, all those power guys, don't mind them. All those revelation guys, the Bible says money answer it. That's the members answering him now. All things. Whereas there's somebody dying in the hospital with cancer, a millionaire, that money cannot do anything about. Are we together now? answer it all things and if any of his member dare ask him and say sir why don't the power of god work in you say are you stupid am i not rich is that no power you see that person becomes a disloyal person imagine how many of us are called disloyal for asking questions pastor we don't pray in tongues in this church but is it all right don't ever ask me i am this i am that don't go and join all those riffraff roadside prophets man of god is it okay if i meet a man of god to hear the counsel of god no the word is everything just focus on the word don't let any roadside prophet come and deceive you whereas that man is in utter confusion and five minutes of this ministry can correct 10 years in his life many members would have moved forward if only they went to where the eyes of god is but they refuse because the pastor has the hand of god and they keep seeing the hand of God. The hand does not see. It only holds what the eyes see. Listen to me because many of us are starting ministry now. Some of us are in ministry. Some of us are leaders. And already, we are, if we are not careful, we are, get, we are getting into big error. We've been mentored by all kinds of people. That's why I see as a man of God, if God gives you any influence over people, go and pray and say, Lord, let me not raise a people that will be defiant from your patterns i say it with all humility not to blow the trumpet of this ministry but by his grace koinonia has been part and parcel of the building and the lifting of many ministries as a person we have account numbers of many ministries that i'm not even connected to they are not my friends we could just hear that there is a program somewhere and say look we have to do something the other day i think dunamis came and they were opening their branch here. our protocol department all of them they said no, let's go and serve i said quickly make sure that anything that is needed let it be given my koinonia i am apostle i'm the owner of zaria god gave it to me it's my property no this is why men of god don't sleep this is why men of god yoke members with covenant swear that you will stay why will i swear why you change clothes why why shouldn't i i mean I, I should swear that what no or we now make it prophetic god told me the day you leave me or the day you do this there is a cause where this is a lie there is no cause coming anywhere anywhere just because someone is falling down when we are saying it does not mean it's a lie there is no cause anywhere even god you can choose to leave him I said before you life and death why will somebody come and threaten you let me tell you the truth i love the body but it's a lie it's our insecurity it's not the holy spirit don't blame the, the holy spirit has no part in this people stay when they are changed people don't just become loyal to a leader foolishly don't you know that in the kingdom you keep things by leaving them hmm whosoever keeps his life shall lose it whosoever keeps his members shall whosoever tries to keep money shall but whosoever loses it for my sake 
Are you learning something? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Exaggeration. Now, let me teach you something. It is true that there are erroneous things in the body, but hear me, correcting the body of Christ is a ministry. You have to be called into it. The same way God calls someone to be a prophet, you are called. It's part of the apostolic and prophetic system of governance. And it's not just every apostle and every prophet that is a corrector. Even among apostles and prophets, there are rankings and dimensions. Not just because you are an apostle or prophet or pastor or teacher. I am pastor. So, so, so. I read in Harvard. I am. No, no, sir. We are misleading people. There are spiritual conditions for you to have the authorization to be shown the weakness of the body. Let me tell you this. You can observe what you think is the weakness of the body. But God can show you what is the weakness of the body. There is a condition to end that level of intimacy from God where God can show you this is where my body is weak. Correct it. Hey Jimmy, if your son or your wife feels down, do you just walk to anybody on the street and say my wife, my son has a little rashes here or my son has knife cut him here and you open your son's cloth. Do you do that? You go to an authorized place called a hospital and even in that hospital you enter a room and if need be in that room you can pull up and you are comfortable because it is the authorized place where that matter is addressed if you pull your son's cloth on the road somebody will look at you and say man of god what is going on but if you pull your son's cloth there it is the place not every place is a place of correction let me tell you this there is a condition you must sustain as a man of God to be afforded the opportunity to contribute in correcting the body. And that element is not prayer. That element is not fasting. That element is not even revelation. That element is genuine love for the body. Not for God, for the body. You will never be given access to correct the body until you love that body. You can't correct the body from the standpoint of hatred. You can't correct the body from the standpoint of resentment. You can't correct the body from the standpoint of error. It's impossible. If I hate keyboards and this guy is making a mistake, I don't have the right to correct him. Because my correction will meet with a bias that has been there. Let me tell you this. I travel a lot and you can ask those who travel with me, I go to all kinds of churches and they do all kinds of things. Sometimes I am surprised when I see what people do in many churches. My mind, I say, if I catch my child doing that kind of thing, we will talk, oh, we will talk seriously. Yet, I am able to have the accommodation. Let me give you a secret. If you look at Christ in every church, you will find him. Mm. Let me repeat. They went to a tomb where there was no life and found Jesus there. A tomb where there is no life. Yet when the woman kept looking, she saw Jesus in that tomb. Is it in your Bible? The living have nothing to do in the grave. But a woman was determined to see Jesus. And although her location was the grave, she still saw him. So that dead church that you think your pastor is as dead as whatever the day your heart is humble and you know that the builder is not a man of god but the spirit of god one day in the confusion of your pastor he will say something that is the secret for your lifting now we who god has helped with little revelation little grace here this is what we do when we go to church we hold our bibles arrogantly and sit at the back we don't sit in front because the man doesn't have anything to say and then he comes as usual Turn to the book of this and that. And God so loved the world. Are you aware of this? And someone is just nodding and saying, Oh God, I, I would have listened to a message that would bless me. What is this guy doing and wasting my time? And you think what you are demonstrating is superiority because of spiritual level. It's a sign you have fallen for the deception yourself. Because the higher you rise in the kingdom, the more you know we are products of his mercy. So while you stand there and watch the man of God ramble and make mistakes and quote wrong scriptures, in the midst of it, you, if you really look at Jesus, the Holy Spirit will start speaking to you 
and say truly there is this treasure in earthen vessels you say this man may not be so accurate yet he has been pastoring for 15 years and the members didn't leave him while you who has revelation is struggling to have 10 members and the god starts revealing to you you are now seeing jesus in that weak man that there is a grace upon this man one day in the midst of his confusion he would tell you T.L. Osborne came to Lagos and he was part of those who were helping to hold his bag and T.L. Osborne touched his head he said that's where he got it pastor I know you don't preach well but I just found out you are carrying something I need touch me and the man said no are you who preach very well I was impressed he said pastor you were impressed with my revelation but what I need now is what you carry there is no man of God that comes to my life that I cannot receive anything from. No. That's why I see some of our fathers. I don't sit down and say, oh, revelation, revelation. There are places I travel to minister. I already know that they may not have that level of word content. But when it's time to pray, I'm humble. Please, reveal it to me. Many of us are about to lose it because if it is not a company of people who have your level of spiritual enlightenment they don't matter to you you will miss something because the greatest treasures you need will be hidden in that reverend that cannot speak english that reverend that is it one day god will tell you go for the capro missions program i say lord me me that i'm looking to be young what is capro how many will forest to go and win with soul when i can snap my finger i've learned the law of exemption and god says break your pride and follow them to that village you follow them to that village and you sit down and see a house reverend who has not been sick once for 22 years god will say this is why i brought you kneel down let him release something upon you before you carry your pride and be lying that you have not taken drugs for 30 years and die two weeks later on kneel down let that man give you something genuine let me tell you this one of the secrets of my spiritual growth is my open-heartedness towards the body not necessarily my perfection in pursuing god my open-heartedness that does not mean you jump at error no no when i discern grace i realize there is something this woman never built a house but she never went hungry she would tell you every pastor that rose up came and stayed in her house there is something you should receive there we are about losing that's why many of us do you know let me tell you one of the things with error once you stay in a dimension and don't open up to the body your area of strength will magnify and your area of lapse will become clear it will be clear that only your hands are growing but your head is remaining small it will be clear that you are growing in prosperity but your knowledge of God is diminishing. It will be clear that you are growing in the miraculous, but you don't have a heart for God. By the grace of God, I want to raise the balanced people that they can look at your life and see that the matters of life, when they come to passion for God, you are there. Prayer, you are there. Not because I have all, but I know how to bring all. I travel somewhere and I see a man of God ah apostle you are the great man and your messages while he's saying that i'm observing lord what do i see this man has more character than me i may pray more than him but if we stand here and somebody is about to kill us i would deny christ and run but this guy will stay and die that means there is a grace for courage that i need our pastor is coming from adamawa state i had the privilege they invited me i've been there three times now sir yes three times and when Boko Haram struck 2014 sir am I right and destroyed those people in Mubi it was that meeting that was like um, it was a starting point for the churches again while I preached and saw the way they honored me I asked myself a question I said with all this mouth I make if I was part of the pastors that stood before Boko Haram will I denounce Christ don't be too fast say me uh -uh. now there are protocol people protecting you but there, a pastor can go out in the morning and say, wife, if you don't see me, just know that I died for Christ. That means there is a grace. You say the man is not praying in tongues, but you who is praying in tongues, you run away at a sound on your zinc. This guy is standing and watching a gun. Do you think it is normal? No. 
by faith abel offered it takes something to offer yourself now a wise man will meet that man of god and say sir you may not have the grace to preach and heal like me but i see that there is a dimension revealed to you if i stay where i am i will raise sons that can pray but never stand for christ i need that grace i admit i don't have it i admit that dimension has been opened up to you i humble myself sir it does not make you small this is what we will never do as men of god our pride will never allow us we will hide and listen to tapes in the secret Hi. and some of you are already learning those kinds of things you never see yourselves and celebrate yourself that guy is pastor femi pastor femi of where rema which which rema ah please i came into this town and i'm a man of god already who is this pastor of where under who no if you don't change from this a generation will show that there was a lapse of god that we did not tap into don't ever let anybody say the prophetic is not useful just because you found the word of god don't call every prophet a reef raff and a roadside prophet there is a dimension only prophecy can birth no amount of study can bring you there there is a dimension only mental transformation can bring so don't insult mensa otterbill and say oh these guys are just uh -uh. there is a dimension only joyce mayer can bring there is a dimension only benny Hinn can bring there is a dimension only dr lukoya can bring there is a dimension only papa kumui can bring you ignore dr lukoya and demons kill you in your pride <laughs> you die the death of a fool before your time a man who was the best in molecular genetics and left it left something went to school abroad exceptional in molecular genetics and came and humbled himself to carry the cross and all of a sudden you see him and just say what is all these things we even mimic them in laughter and the demons say thank god for such a foolish generation are we together then you see a man of god papa Iya deboe can just stand i'm mentioning names because i'm saying positive things about them and because their fathers indeed may god bless you you're like i i need And you listen to td jakes and while he's moving keyboards are playing and moving and you just came out of seven days dry retreat like a skeleton almost dying i said what is this guy saying is it just to say you will come out that you can't say in one minute and while you are there in your pride slaves left africa and went to us god picks a man out of them and makes one of the best preachers you didn't ask how it happened when they traced his origin they found out he's Igbo, a nigerian are you learning who have you resented because of imbalance some of us right now we love god but we have been we have educated ourselves into believing that some people in the body are not relevant for our growth i'm telling you you are already in imbalance especially if you're a man of god if you are hearing me and you're in this mistake change now change quickly never go back home and put men of god and keep bringing them one by one. Oh, this one it doesn't have fire this one it doesn't have this ah this one i like his suit i like this one i like his this be careful there is one lord there is one faith there is one baptism there is something that joshua selman will never see even if i fast for 400 days it will not be covered by a demon it will be covered by god himself so that i will need a jimmy to see it there is something a jimmy will never see until he looks at a pastor toby or a pastor here in adamawa there was something about god i learned when i went to adamawa sir i, I say it 
I have never seen a level of generosity from people like that. Women, some of them old enough to be my mother. And you see, I'll say it. Till today, when I go to movie, they see me, they start jumping, daddy, oh, yo, yo. People with doctors, lecturers, with such depth of humility. I don't know if I can do that for anybody. And while they do those things, I don't sit down with my pride and say, wow, you mean they acknowledge me this far? I sit down and say, Lord, let this grace for humility that will be upon a man of 50 years before I now die in the next 10 years because of pride. Do you see that God has put the remedy for our fall in the body, but because we could not tap into it, imbalance is a destroyer. There are many families today that have no business being in poverty if they would listen to those carrying the graces. It's amazing that what we resent is what we secretly desire. Oh, I prophesy, your name is divine. Ah, man of God. And someone said, oh, these riffraffs, divine. Whereas, one day he tried to, he said, what's your name? Are you Gabriel? He said, no, I'm a Jimmy. And just, ah. He said, no. He, he wanted it secretly. He was just too hot. And then he said, no, what is not all about prophesying? We must be careful most of the things people criticize they test it secretly when it becomes too hot they live as if nothing happened then they create a theology ah, ah, how can one person be praying for 12 hours life is not all about prayer that man has tried to pray secretly he, he thought it's just by energy the grace is not there so he sees someone fasting dry two weeks there's a man I know in Abuja. I don't know anybody that fasts on earth like him. One day, maybe when we are doing something in Koinonia, and he honors me a lot, I'm sure I'll bring him one day to pray. That man can go for um, no food, no water, not that you drink water in the night. Dry. Ah! If that man prays, even standing close to him, you will feel as if they are electrocuting you. I literally mean it. There is no deliverance case that gets to that man that goes back free. Papa! Before, I, no, I'm serious. I really am serious. That guy has stretched this body and brought it under subjection. The kind of power that is in that man's voice. Yet he will come to me like this and still kneel down. Sometimes I'm tempted to say, stand up, oh. You better stand up and lay hands on me. How you know you love the body is your outspoken celebration of the uniqueness in it. The moment you are ashamed to celebrate the uniqueness in the body is a sign that something about it is intimidating you. Oh, a beautiful song. Look how wonderful this guy's voice was. When he was singing, I was just listening to his speech. I said, who dash monkey banana? Let me try that thing. I was in a bell quarter, my voice ceased just because it was raining. Yes, someone shouting. <laughs> Are we together? Now, don't forget, for those of you who know a little about me, I was once a music director. I'm not naive musically, but now I carry my pride and try what he's doing, and that's the end of it. There's no koinonia for one month. So I can choose. To respond to my frustration by trivializing him and say it's not all about pitch the most important is the message no sir we need the pitch too otherwise recite a poem don't sing <laughs> it's not all about prosperity okay carry everything in your house and give to the poor the blogger who is talking is using an ipad that he bought 250,000 and say it's not all about prosperity are we together it's not all about money and there is a hot meal in your kitchen waiting for you and there are poor people there it's not all about prayer yet you have intercessors in your church praying for you so you know prayer is important it's not all about fasting yet people are fasting for you it's not all about prophecy yet you call and say uh, promise just find out whether god is saying something around this i'm agreeing with you it's just that I, i'm not i had something i just want to i won't tell you because i is pride just say help me sir i'm trusting to hear something 
I'm a man of God too, but there's, there's this, the vision is hazy. I'm not seeing very well. What is there? Does it mean you are not born again? A hazy vision is something that happens to everybody. Jesus touched people many times. Are we together? You must reject imbalance. The imbalance that comes in approaching the body. The imbalance in camping around a dimension as revealed to you and ignoring the usefulness of what God has distributed in the body. You must sustain a fortitude tonight to embrace. There is something I've learned from our children that no adult can teach me. No matter how simple and well behaved you are, these children have taught something. They have taught me faith. They have taught me courage. Some of, do you know some of these little children are in prayer department? Am I right? Prayer department. They don't miss it. So if a child can be in a prayer department, what excuse does an adult have? Pray. You tell them, I'll buy you sweets. They won't forget. They come back and say, Uncle, my sweet. They never ask whether you have the money. Because they expect you to be adult enough to check whether you have money first before speaking. Now... You learn that thing and when God says, I know the thoughts I think towards you, like a child, you don't start asking, Lord, where will the uncle come from? No. You stop learning when pride closed your eyes. May humility open it tonight so that you can see what is going on. You see, that's why many of us don't know what God is doing in the body. We only knew what he was doing with us in our little corners. And we get up and say, revival is coming when it has started since because you were not there the virgins had oil but they could not go to the market there were others who had in abundance but the foolish virgins did not get more a time came their own finished they had their own oil but they would have gone to get some more the same way joshua selman has anointing but i need to get some more from benihim i need to get some more from kenneth copeland I need to get some more because the challenges in the future at this my level of anointing will eat me as if i'm not anointed so i will not allow the pride because of the level god has brought me now believe that i can stand benny Hinn's kind of challenge so i need the grace so i will listen when pastors come to me for counseling there's nothing that humbles me more than that and some of those people are anointed people Dr. Luca and Dr. John sent me a text and they said, Apostle, we are coming over. And I said, oh dear, I love you. When I was told, I was told that since around 4 a.m. or so, this is the assistant chaplain. He's also a man of God himself. But he came here since around 4 to sit down. What is there about a man? The veil has been torn and it tears and you, you don't enter. The veil has been torn, you are still poor. The veil has been torn, you are still this. Whereas you can humble yourself and say every house is built by some man, but God is the builder of it all. There are people who must assist you in life, otherwise you will never rise. It's not pride. One of the things that God helps me to do at the beginning of the year, I go and our daddy escorts me to go and meet the pastors of CGC. I go and greet them and get down on my knees with just a little i honor them and i get down on my knees and the pastor and his wife they speak and prophesy over me and lay hands over me i won't come and say see crowd no there is a grace if i were their age i don't know if i would submit to a small boy like this so lord help me before this pride that comes with middle belt and kill me where we don't have anything yet we make a lot of noise lord deliver me from it so that i can look at one of these our little ones tomorrow and say apostle i saw myself laying hands on you and i said do it the girl is shaking i said i said do it and she lays hands and from that day you enter a dimension of revelation you can sit and say god forbid transfer it to another adult let me receive it from the adult and god says you will never get it that way are you blessed yes imbalance is dangerous is why we have not seen i remember years ago 
I tried to pray for a woman. I think somewhere in Abuja or so, I can't remember. I prayed for that woman. I have never felt helpless before a sick body like that day. You know how you pray and you know that there's no hope of that prayer being answered under that condition. I couldn't feel any anointing. The woman just stood there. It saddened me. I encouraged this woman. Koinonia, no, Koinonia had not even started. It was just about to start. I said, Lord, how can a man be this helpless? I came in your name, bragged in your name. If you see the scriptures I was quoting, quoted this, 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 the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power and all that. There was no power. Yet the Bible says in my name, I did it, it didn't work. That meant I need to submit to somebody who has the eyes of the spirit to tell me what the Bible was saying. Because it's clear I did not get what Jesus was saying. Are we together? And yet I watched Benny Hinn climb up the stage before he raised one worship song. 40 wheelchairs. 40. Brothers and sisters, this thing is not magic. If you don't have it, find it. Because it is there. If it is not in your life, it is not missing. It only requires the humility to search. You desire the prophetic and it's not in your life. It is available. It will take your humility to search. Man of God, I have prayed. But I know God has directed me. But I do not know whether or not God is calling me to Kogi or Lafia. And the moment you are talking, the Lord just tells the person Lafia. And he says, the Lord is sending you to Lafia. In one minute, the word of the Lord came because of your humility to align. Instead of fasting for 100 days and you hear Lafia, just when you round up the fast, you hear a choir bomb. And as soon as you round up the fast, you hear just. You see that? Whatever is a limitation to you, we are going to pray. Please listen carefully whatever is a limitation to you the word limitation is relative everything you need is already resident within the body if your life is poor god did not make it so you ignore the grace that conveys that possibility if your prayer life is dead it is not god's will you have ignored the envoys that he has put that supply of the spirit upon if you do not have access to the deep things of god it is because pride has made you to take away the relevance the necessity of the word of god i look at people and with all humility i know they have stopped growing they've not backslidden but they put a peg around their lives simply because they cannot open their door and say oh god bring in other dimensions that are not here they've stood there and you know that's not their best that's not their greatest hallelujah praise the lord tonight is my prayer that god will deliver us from the error of imbalance that we will escape the danger of imbalance 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 that we will not trivialize the dimension of god that is required for our lives all dimensions cannot be in your life but all dimensions can work for you listen carefully all dimensions cannot be in your life it's impossible but all dimensions available can work for you meaning that it's impossible for me to be as prophetic as ever as apostolic as ever as evangelical as ever no there is the limitation that god puts I can't be Benny Hinn and Kenneth Copeland and Joyce Mayer and T.D. Jakes and Bishop Oyedepo and Papa Ia Adeboye at the same time with the same degree. No, sir. I have to be one of them. But I can enjoy what is on Bishop Oyedepo, Papa Adeboye, Benny Hinn. I can enjoy it through the humility of participations, the word koinonia, sharing together, the ability to extend your hand through humility to say, sir, I have seen the dimension of God's grace in your life and I'm open to let it work in my life. And honor becomes the key to that access. And all of a sudden you find out that what was a mountain to you is trivialized under a certain kind of grace.
people have prayed for me in my life i have been a product of many people's prayers i have been surprised at how powerful the body of christ is i have prayed for people and sometimes i look at what they call a mountain and i am shocked because i know how easy that problem can be solved and in my mind sometimes i wonder where, where were you why did you allow it to get this bad before locating the body for help are we together there is something tonight that you need in god for you to move to the next level that is not yet in your life but it is available and for many of us the error of imbalance has made you to think that because your life cannot produce it it cannot be produced so you just say if it was for me god would have brought it directly through me and just because it didn't come directly through me then it's not important please hear me prosperity is as important as healing healing is as important as prayer prayer is as important as visions are we together salvation is as important as mental transformation mental transformation is as important as your health and hygiene stay in your area of calling but do not allow imbalance make you trivialize what god is doing god is not only walking in koinonia brothers and sisters god is walking across zaria god is walking across the north god is walking across africa it is only a privilege for us to be at the level that we are now in his program it's a privilege for us to be contributors that's the word contributors that you can come and listen to the supply of the dimension that god has put in me of course administratively speaking it it is important for you to be able to stay in your area of whatever ministry or whatever church you are part of for the purpose of administration and leadership however let me tell you the truth any man that indoctrinates you into camping around him alone and all the dimension revealed to him whether in the name of mentorship or fatherhood has deceived you if i am your spiritual father it means you have taken you have come under my authority but it does not mean that i represent all of christ to you i represent the voice and the speakings of god in your life but i must have the flexibility to allow you grow and this is my goal god knows i get materials that have nothing to do with me i send it to people in the ministry listen listen to it this will bless you it blessed me so much are we blessed we are going to pray father my my father would have prospered if only he listened to that prosperity preacher he said prosperity preachers are rubbish now my father is an evangelist who has lost his house although a preacher of the gospel lord my arrogant business partner father would have been such a man of prayer and he would have seen that accident before it happened but he ignored it because he thought everything was money and he neglected the place of prayer and evil came sat in our house and there was no eyes to see and nobody to manipulate things from the realm of the spirit and we died that death was not caused by god the refusal to tap from what god is doing closed your eyes until there was destruction there's nobody to help me in school no if only you listen to the person that god used to say go to this church you would have found somebody who would have sponsored you it is your refusal because you never believe that there are people kind enough to sponsor you without strings attached and your imbalance did not allow you to tap into that dimension tonight i want us to start with a prayer of repentance lord forgive me for trivializing your other dimensions scattered across the body thank you for what you have shown me as a man of god lord forgive me for insulting business people forgive me for calling prosperous people wasters of your time lord i forgive me for calling prayer warriors 
hungry noise makers forgive me for insulting deliverance forgive me for insulting the prophetic i ask for mercy for insulting people who transform the mind in the place of prayer forgive me for thinking those who are the the personal development experts are useless to your agenda forgive my ignorance that has come through imbalance this imbalance has cheated me and my life has lost the flavor that should be go ahead and pray the reason why i am not blessing all things is because imbalance has pegged a dimension of god from my life if i opened up myself to the healing ministry i would have carried that healing anointing my church would have been a church that experienced his healing i rejected the prophetic and now confusion is destroying my life lord i ask for mercy i've exaggerated the prophetic and i've left the word of god now i've gotten into witchcraft and error i've become a slave to prophets have mercy on me and let me return back to the word i've been so obsessed with power and signs and wonders that there is no place for spiritual growth being grounded and established in the word of god all i look for now is power lord have mercy take away that imbalance from my life outside make sure you are praying everywhere pray the error the danger the destructive calamity that imbalance brings lord have ignored the anointing and all i do is just an empty theological bible study without the power without grace so my church my business my family has no genuine anointing lord i open up myself to the dimension of authentic power lord i rejected excellence i thought it was just about prayer and bible study and healing the sick I rejected excellence now all my TV programs are not accepted because they don't match a level of excellence I have wasted resources because of lack of excellence there are certain partners and helpers that excellence would have drawn to my ministry but lack of excellence threw, threw them away I received that dimension pray hallelujah hallelujah we are going to pray there is not maybe not in koinonia but i observe the body of christ and i see a widespread of prayerlessness people don't pray again pray for me that's the language of people oh you are going for please pray for us so oh. and people don't pray you know why because in a bid to balance this we have insulted every prayer warrior insulted anyone any church that prays these are just noise makers it's all about money and we have found out that there is no sensitivity in the body no discernment people don't pray people don't travel gone are the days when you see people lock themselves somewhere and cry to the god of heaven now people fast and all they just want cheap things oh man of god let me sow a seed just touch my head there are some things it's not just by impartation you must stay and cry upon the horns of the altar till something falls upon you from heaven we are going to pray one prayer and say lord what dimension is needed for my next level open me up unto it oh god lift your voice and pray lord if it is the prophetic that will take me to my next season then i open up my spirit for it if it's the miraculous that will take me to the next dimension if it's a healthy mental transformed mind lord i receive that dimension are we praying please if it's a restoration of fire upon my altar that is the requirement for the next dimension i receive it if it's the knowledge of administration and excellence that i need lord balance my life lord balance my life balance my church balance my business balance my understanding balance my life balance my life 
take away from me the sarcasm for prophets take away the sarcasm for Bible study take away the sarcasm for prayer take away the sarcasm for diligence and Lord let me incorporate these dimensions as coming from you hallelujah listen to me we're rounding up there are very anointed people very anointed people who don't know how to speak before great men because to them every gathering of people is a church service and then God sends you now to your destiny helper and you don't know how to speak and they throw you away back to the prison although you can interpret dreams you didn't understand the protocol of seeing Pharaoh because you ignored the person who can teach you how to communicate so you find out that the ministries never cross Nigeria because no other region can accept you you have not been trained to understand global leadership and you don't know how to synergize spirituality with people's culture you travel to another person's culture they jail you as a man of God because you do not understand the terms there are other ministries that the revelation God is giving them should go to the whole earth but your resentment for wealth has kept you poor and so nobody can hear your voice no tapes no books no nothing because prosperity that will give it wings is not there i can look at a congregation and tell in a split second the dimension they are ignoring because i see prayer warriors who the the oldest person there may be 60 years no car no house no school fees the moment they are driving children from school fees is all is all the prayer warriors children that return back home because they have ignored it now let me tell you something about imbalance your imbalance makes you represent misrepresent god to your territory because they are depending unbelievers are depending on the idea you give them about god make sure you give them a balanced perception don't present to them a god who empowers people and removes prosperity don't present to them a God who all that he does is to give them money and their spiritual lives. They are not saved. They are not born again. They are going to hell, but they have money. That's a misrepresentation. Don't present to them a man of God that is anointed, anointed, and there's no room to teach the word. So you have a congregation of members that never grow. You have occultists in churches and they never, never grow. They don't understand the principles they destroy their homes half of a church is divorced with people because the teaching ministry there is no teaching priest there is power but there is no wisdom to share the ministry that keeps homes together are we together or you can have a crowd of people who never pray the prayer warrior in that whole church prays only for one hour because that dimension has been ignored we're going to pray one last prayer balance my life balance my life lift your voice and cry balance my life lord i receive leadership lord i receive prayer lord i see i receive wisdom through the word lord i receive favor lord i receive excellence lord i receive the warfare dimension i receive the prophetic I receive the deliverance dimension of the world. Every provision that the grace of God affords, even if it is not working in my life, I am open-minded towards the body. No criticism and no resentment. I repent from criticizing any and every man of God. Regardless of the limitations, I open myself to the multifaceted dimensions of God resident within his ecclesia I receive the dimension that brings speed I receive the dimension that brings establishment I receive the dimension that brings glory I receive the dimension that brings increase I receive are you praying Lord until now I have not seen the need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I thought it was just something for Pentecostals. 
but right now i open my spirit to receive is a dimension needed in my life in your name we will rise i don't know you reign Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer. Lord, put a dimension of love for the body in me. Love, love. When there is no love, criticism will remain. When there is no love, sarcasm and resentment will remain. Open your mouth and cry. Love for the body. Love for every church. Love for every man of God regardless of their dimensions regardless of their limitations regardless of their imperfections lord we embrace them we love them if they are part of the body they are the beloved lift your voice no longer will i resent any man of god no longer will i resent any church no longer will i resent any fellowship any gathering of believers my propositions against them may be legitimate but it still is not enough reason even if you are not part of them wish them well even if you are not part of that church wish them well even if you are not part of that prayer group wish them well even if you are not part of that christian organization wish them well you are not part of the mission agents wish them well talk well about them Talk well about their leaders. Hallelujah. Let me pray a prayer for you. From the depth of my heart, I want to pray for you. Listen, I have gotten more results in my life from loving the body than from praying. Believe me. I have gotten more results in my life just from loving the body than I have from my prayer life. There are things I have not prayed for. The love for the body brought it to me. There are dimensions that my love, I love the body of Christ. There is no way I have not ministered and there is no way I will not minister. There is no way I will see a man of God and have to turn and leave him and say, oh, you are from this. No. I have many friends today, great people. We don't believe many things. We don't agree in many things. Yet it is still too small a reason. You don't have to agree with people to love them. You must agree to work together. But you can disagree and still love them. You believe in tongues. I don't believe in tongues. No problem. You pray your tongues. We can work together. But I can love you. You believe in finances. I don't believe in finance. No problem. I sit with my broke life. After all, Lazarus and Abraham, they all went to heaven. So you can sit the way you want and shortchange yourself. You believe in finance. You don't believe in prayer. Okay, fine. I, I can. But this hatred. Do you believe in finance? No. Go. Do you believe in prayer? No. Do you believe in wearing trousers? No. Go. Do you believe in tying your hair? No. Go. Do you believe in praying, shouting? No. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't ever be part of that nonsense. You will think it's a good thing until you watch yourself destroy yourself. Are we together? Listen, when you come to my house, I have a modus operandi. I have a system in my own house because it is my house. But when I go to your house, even if I see what is not permissible in my house, in your house, I must sustain a system of accommodation. There is a way we do service here in Koinonia. You don't, except someone is under the anointing. You don't see somebody just run and come and fall down here. He may kneel down, may lie down there, but you don't find that. There are churches you go to that during praise and worship, the man of God is jumping. Another member outside will come and be jumping with the man of God and they are sweating. Don't just see that and say, God forbid, what is going on here? Be careful. In the midst of the lampstand, Christ is still there. 
are we together you don't come and then you see a woman just because she's not wearing earrings she's standing and I see all these people we have moved past this level and you just say who is this woman humble yourself and sit down and say Lord let this woman speak to me you don't come and just because you see a woman maybe not covering her hair or whatever preserve your perspective as revealed to you by God but you must give allowance for the diversity of the body there are things I believe it will never change no matter where I go to there are convictions are we together but I'm able to open up myself and when I go to certain regions I make sure that I go through the sacrifice of aligning to their understanding there are places I cannot fly a shirt like this to go and minister not because it is wrong the context of their understanding will not allow them to receive of the grace of God upon my life there are even some that I cannot even wear a suit because once your suit is excessively clean and flashy that in itself may not even suggest that you are serious spiritually so i can decide to just wear something that is plain even traditionals i may not even wear something with many colors is the sacrifice so that there will be minimal distraction so they can receive it's called love for the body when you love the body there is no sacrifice that is too great if you are going to a church and they say to enter this church cover your head no i won't do this god no. carry your wrapper cover your head and enter and see Jesus and let Jesus minister to you and you go back when you do this you will see how your life will begin to grow because when the prophetess is coming and she's on trouser I don't say oh this is no what are you saying when the woman is coming and she doesn't have any earring when the man is coming and all of a sudden you see him looking poor and wretched you don't say all oh, this poor man what do you have to tell me when we do this then the lapses in our lives will be closed and we will see a new church that is rising complete perfected by the diversities of the body therefore i pray for you in the name of jesus the grace to receive the multifaceted dimensions of god released through the body i release it upon you right now in the name of jesus christ i pray for you that the grace to be and remain unresentful towards the body unresentful towards any and every church receive that grace I cast away from your life the spirit of cynicism and criticism based on differences that you do not appreciate I command that spirit to live your life forever I plant in you the fortitude to accommodate dimensions that are inconveniencing to you in the name of Jesus Christ the grace to overlook the weaknesses and the limitations in the body so as to receive the grace upon her receive it in Jesus name the grace to sacrifice your convenience so as to find a dimension of Christ resident within certain inconveniencing spheres I release that grace upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ every dimension of God that should be working in your life and is deficient in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that by the mercy of God may he navigate that dimension back to your life in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for the spirit of humility that the pride that makes you see or think that any other person who is not you is not needed in your spiritual growth process I take away that pride forever in the name of Jesus Christ and finally I pray for you from tonight may you begin to execute an uncanny level of spiritual balance balance in the communication of the word of God balance in the dispensing of the anointing balance in your prosperity work balance in administration and excellence balance in character balance in wisdom and mental transformation balance in your passion for soul and souls and the evangelical dimension balance in the prophetic balance in your understanding of Christ balance in your understanding of Satan 
balance in your understanding of every dimension of your work with God. I plant upon you an anointing for balance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Wave your hands to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Please, let's keep standing, everyone. I want to pray right now for people here who have never please keep standing let's honor this who have never made a genuine decision for jesus you are an overflow one two three online whatever part of the nations of the world you are here and you are saying apostle if you will pray with me i am willing to hand my life entirely to jesus or you are saying apostle i love jesus but it is this imbalance that has robbed me of a dimension of spiritual seriousness i need fire i need restoration aside from overflow three i would request just for overflow three to walk to their projector stand because of distance if you are here overflow one and two and the main auditorium you are part of these people that have called to give your life to christ to rededicate your life and your all to him wherever you are please leave your seat very quickly and come up here very quickly let's appreciate them as they do so please very quickly very quickly there has to be someone who is saying apostle i am ready don't wait for someone to be the first make your way be bold bless you darling i believe there are more people if they are coming from outside clear the way for them please don't be ashamed make your way make your way quickly 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 we have just one or two minutes for that overflow one overflow two god bless you make your way quickly the spirit of god is speaking to you and saying son daughter it's time to have a new beginning it's time to start afresh are you still coming there has to be some more people there has to be some more people lord i run to you as the deer pans after the water brooks my soul thirsts for you come Come, God bless you. Hallelujah. Now, all of you in front, I want you to um, just repeat after me. I want to lead you to a very genuine, genuine prayer of salvation. Let your heart be open. God bless you. People are still coming. Overflow 3, you can walk to your projector stand. Those online, just listen to the prayer and follow along by faith. Lift your right hand and say, truthfully speaking and passionately after me, say, Lord Jesus say it again lord jesus this night i have heard your word i declare say it i declare that i love you with all my heart this night i make jesus the lord of my heart i receive eternal life into my spirit and i declare tonight that i'm a child of god my sins forgiven a new life given to me i receive grace to live a victorious christian life i receive grace to live a balanced christian life i receive grace to love the body of christ and to receive from the body of christ in the name of jesus christ keep your hands lifted jesus thank you for bringing these ones I pray that you will keep them let the grace that brings the grace that keep and the grace that lift let it be released upon them in the name of Jesus Lord I pray that these ones will begin a journey from tonight that will only lead them to conformity conformity greatness glory power in the name of Jesus Christ I pray that every dimension of you that is missing in their lives that by the mystery of the body you will bring it back to them in the name of jesus thank you heavenly father in jesus name i pray amen god bless you now please i want you to follow uh, there's a lady waving her hands all of you this way in front there should be someone at overflow three and so you can follow please follow her right now the light may be covering you but there's someone at the other side of the light god bless you god bless you god bless you Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. 
comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.